Onalaska High School Winter Athletics on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Promo line. Liner back. Rides the rail, not out. Bass, Tanner Bass. He lost the handle. Here comes Como. He'll try to break up the right side. Gets around the defense. Here's Como. Speed. Como towards the front of the net. Shut it oh. up high over the crossbar. Oh, that's a goal. Did it go in? Oh, yeah. oh my God, I thought it went over. Oh, he oh, oh what a pretty goal it was. Tonight, the Onalaska Lacrosse Boys Hockey Co-op hosts the Homestead Highlanders in a non-conference hockey tilt. Onalaska High School Winter Athletics on CRSN. Brought to you courtesy of these great local businesses. Kurt Paff State Farm Insurance Agency of Onalaska. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Center. Natural, gentle, and effective care. Big Al's Pizza, downtown La Crosse. Quality and tradition since 1979. Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling Service. La Crosse's leader in waste management solutions. Every plumbing and heating, proudly serving the La Crosse area since 1969. The Crow, burgers, bourbon, beer. Noble Insurance Service, building strong relationships to secure your future. Also by Howie's, La Crosse's hometown hangout. Waste management, always working for a sustainable tomorrow. Angelini's Pizzeria and Ristorante, you're invited to taste the difference. Ultra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life. CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal, a cut above the rest. Slumberland Furniture, design your way at Slumberland Furniture. Gino's Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs, Chicago Food with attitude. Cooley Bank. Bank with confidence at Cooley Bank. Cooley Golf Bowl Bar and Grill, the number one recreational facility in Onalaska. And by Maury's Volkswagen Audi of La Crosse. Moving life forward. Now, here with the call from the Onalaska Omni Center, the voice of hockey in the Cooley region, Rick Frankie and Dean Lounsbro. Good evening. Welcome to High School Hockey here on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Rick Frankie alongside Dean Lonsboro tonight for all the action as the Homestead Highlanders are in town to take on the Hilltoppers tonight, the hockey co-op of lacrosse in Alaska. They will be playing tomorrow against the Avalanche. Avalanche hosting West Bend as the other side of the state travels over to the lacrosse area for some high school hockey. West Bend and Homestead know each other quite well. They just faced each other the other day, and it was a West Bend victory, 4-1. to one. That was at West Bend, and uh, they, uh, they are apparently playing some good hockey as West Bend. Obviously, this Homestead team has a line that can really put up some points, Dean, and you know a little bit about them. Um, you know, besides the, the loss to West Bend, though, they've got a, a, a bunch of guys that can score, like Rocco Cicerello. He is a guy who has been playing a little bit with the a Milwaukee power of the NA3. There's another another uh, guy playing with the NA3 from time to time is the defenseman and captain Jack Wanowski. Yep. Uh, so th there's some guys that have got some experience in the junior levels and also Team Wisconsin and uh, you know playing some wheel and stuff like that. So uh, tell us a little bit about this team. Uh, we can break down the scoring and all that, but you know them a little bit. We'll just make it brief. Well, I, I know a little bit about them. I know, uh, like, Rocco played with us with the Jets also and, and, and while he was playing with the Power. So um, it's nice, you know, when these teams come over. Uh, it's good to see different parts of the state. Um, I know when Tim and I were doing it, you know, we were up north. We were in Madison. We were in Milwaukee. And um, they're going to compete. These guys compete because their, their everyday games are – are at a very high compete level, so we got to be ready to go tonight. They play out of the North Shore. They've lost four in a row, but they're looking to right this ship. Eight and ten on the season. The Hilltoppers come in six and ten, and off a five to nothing loss at home against Wanakee. I'd say go watch some of that game. I don't know if you really want to if you're a Hilltopper fan, but you couldn't because ACDC played for like 15 seconds uh, during a before a faceoff, and they blocked it. And I tried to trim it and get rid of it, but. YouTube is stupid sometimes. I just remember you saying, I hope I don't get in trouble because I did that game with you. <laughs> when ACDC came on and I said, what are you talking about? Right. Well, now I just found out. You found what, out. What you were talking about. Coach's show is next. Mick Podrick, the head coach, and uh, Will Shafolius as well. That's next here on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Imagine if you could feel better and live healthier without drugs or surgery. What if we told you that at Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, 
we can help you turn that thought into a reality for you and your family with safe, gentle, and effective chiropractic care. At Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, we focus on treating the whole person at one of our multiple locations, located in Southwest Wisconsin. We are a team of family-oriented chiropractors who offer our patients quality care as it relates to nutrition and weight loss, exercise, and living a healthy lifestyle. From newborns to seniors and everyone in between, all of our patients can experience the benefits of chiropractic care. Whether you're visiting us because you want to feel better, get out of pain, or even lose weight, we want you to know that you've come to the right place on your journey to wellness. Through tailored and specific care plans, we'll create the best treatment for your unique needs. And we don't stop there. We'll listen to your concerns and make you a partner in your care. At Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, we don't just get you well, we'll help you stay well too. Discover the Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Center's difference. It is time for the final question. Who has offered the Rogers rates? Jacob State Farm? Basically anyone. Sorry, buddy, that's incorrect. <laughs> See? We offer great rates that fit anyone's budget. That's enough. Thank you very much. Jessica in the middle. You said me? No. Sorry. <laughs> what are we doing? Whatever. Also me. Great LOL. That was really important. Of course. Everybody gets the rates, I guess. For a surprisingly great race that fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. At Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling, we've been serving the Cooley region for over 35 years, so we know what it takes to meet all your waste and recycling needs. Whether it's picking up the recycling at your local business or taking out the trash at home, we've got you covered. At Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling, we're at your disposal. Every time I go to Angelini's Pizzeria and Restaurante in Alaska, I have a problem deciding on which menu items to order because they're all so amazing. I mean, how does one choose between Chicago stuffed pizza with that tangy tomato sauce and luscious cheese, or a deep dish pan pizza packed with flavor, or Angelini's thin crust pizza with that magical crunch? Lasagna, risotto di pesci, lobster linguine, calamari. Man, this is tough. Hey, at least I know I'll finish the meal with cannolis, Angelini's Pizza Ria and Restaurante on Highway 35 and on Alaska, you're invited to taste the difference. It's raining again. You're trying to sleep upstairs, but you're thinking about what's going on down here. How is your sump pump doing? Is it still running? What will you find in the basement? At Every Plumbing, we want you to sleep with confidence during the heaviest of rains. Our double sump pump with controller system will give you that confidence. It minimizes wear and tear on pumps, and if one fails, there's always a backup. Call Every Plumbing today for a free estimate. Are you seeking a driftless area agent who will sell your home for top dollar? Look to Amy Lorenz. As the owner of Refined Home LLC, a professional home staging company, Amy is the expert in home staging. With an eye for detail, she will present your home at its best for home viewings and photos. Amy is also skilled at helping buyers see potential in homes. Having worked with Gerard Heschler for over 10 years, she uses her knowledge and expertise to get your home sold quickly for top dollar. Contact Amy today to view homes or to schedule your free home selling consultation. Amy Lorenz, Gerard Heschler, your premier real estate agent. Welcome to the Amy Lorenz, Gerard Heschler Real Estate pregame show on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Now, here with the coaches show, Rick Frankie and boys hockey head coach, Mick Podruck. Welcome to the Gerard Heschler, Amy Lorenz, real estate pregame show. Rick Frankie with you. And the coach, Mick Podrick, will also be joined by number four, senior defenseman forward, Will Shafolius. We'll get into that a little bit later on. But first off, coach, tough game against Wanakee. You know, they come in as a high-powered offense, always a shootout typically when the two teams get together. Uh, they had the majority of the attack zone time in that game. Obviously, they got a, a guy who – they call him a defenseman, but I call him the biggest hybrid forward defenseman I've ever seen before. Uh, and Mac Reed and uh, he was kind of having his way he was he, he was a 
quarterback of the day, kind of running that, the puck into the zone offensively. Um, how did you prepare for him? And, you know, what, what, uh, what kind of things do you think you, you, if you had it to do over again, you'd do against a team like that? Sure. Uh, well, the first thing I'll say is that, you know, in today's game, um, you know, defensemen are as much as part of the attack as they've ever been. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's good to see kids uh, having that opportunity to be able to, you know, defensemen especially be able to take the puck um, and have a little more offensive zone time um, than perhaps they're getting, you know, maybe a decade ago or so. Uh, in terms of preparation, you know, right now, we'll, we know when we go against tough teams, we just have to be prepared to battle. And um, I think we did a good job uh, stymieing their offense to a certain degree. Um, obviously, Noah Clement was, was pretty outstanding, especially in that first period. Um, you know, and, and for us, it's, it, again, it's trying to simplify our game, um, get pucks out of the zone, get pucks into the neutral zone, um, hopefully on our forward sticks, and so we can go and attack. And, and you know, it, right now, again, with, with forwards playing defense, um, it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit chaotic in our own end, but we're figuring it out as we go, and, and it's giving kids opportunities for, you know, more ice time and, and to learn something new and different. Um, you know, in that game, I felt that we actually had opportunities to, to close the gap. Um, you know, we had three-ish breakaways, and I think Carter Hayes got a turnover right in front of the net. And unfortunately, you know, their goalie came up big and, and had some big stops. And, and you know, that's it's, it's, it's tough. You know, when you get those opportunities, you don't bury them. You know, it's it, sometimes games can get away from you then. So, but I think, you know, overall, we're finding our ground. I thought we played defensively better than we did even against compared to Notre Dame. So we're, we're figuring it out. It's just taking time. Yeah, the goal count against was down lower. It was only five, and, you know, that first period, you know, it was just so good. I mean, it, he stood on his head. Probably the best period of hockey I've seen Noah Clement play. Yeah, for sure. Uh, now, you got a couple more teams that are pretty talented, not quite at the Wanakee or Notre Dame level, at least not based on what I've watched and, and what I see record-wise, but still also very talented. They put up a couple of good forwards that can really – you know, stir it up in the offensive zone. First off, you've got uh, Homestead on Friday night, and then uh, you've got the the big game uh, on, against West Bend on Saturday. Uh, your thoughts in preparation for those two teams? Well, uh, first thought is, is like, hopefully uh, we have a few more kids and we did a practice today. Uh, we got a little bit of a bug going on again. Um, so hopefully we can dodge that. But, uh, you know, assuming we got our full squad, um, what we're really trying to do right now is, you know, we did a lot of uh, – positional stuff um yesterday we you know we cj took the the offense i took the defense and we just did you know position specific skills um hopefully getting uh our defensemen you know a little more comfortable handling pucks so they can make uh cleaner plays up to our forwards you know we talked about how um you know the the most important pass in the game is that initial pass from the defenseman to the forwards if that's clean you know typically you're going to get you know hopefully a, a rush um, you know, they'll make a play off the rush and then hopefully some offensive zone time. So we, we started with that, um, today, again, a little bit lighter on numbers. Uh, CJ took, uh, power play units this morning. Uh, we had JV practice and we took some varsity kids, uh, to work on power play this morning. And I worked with the JV guys. And then, um, today, like I said, we just, just more passing, just got, you know, we got to clean it up, get used to handling hard and firm passes. Um, so we'll just keep practicing that. And then tomorrow we'll do probably a little more system stuff. Um, you know, a little more on breakouts again, hoping we have, we have most of our spot back. So. Well, it's good to get some insight on, on what, you know, your, your plans are for the week and what you plan for these opponents. And, you know, obviously you've got a, a, an unusual amount of time to prepare for opponents this week. Usually it's, you know, what a, a Tuesday and a Thursday, and then maybe a Saturday. So you don't have the same number of days in between. Um, was there, is there a different, uh, way of approaching the upcoming games this weekend because of that? Um, not necessarily. Well, it, you know, it does give you a little more time to focus on skills. You know, a lot of times when you're, when you're jumping from game to game, you want to touch up on things that, you know, you weren't maybe as effective on in those prior games, but you don't get a chance to kind of go back to basics, which is, it's nice to be able to do that when you have these, these longer gaps. Um, but the downside is, is that you end up with, you know, four, four games in five days, which is what we have coming up here. Um, so, you know, again, so we're hoping that some of that, that skill work translates into more efficient play and then more efficient play means we're going to be effective in all four of those games. How much do you use film in preparation with the guys? How much time do they spend looking at their opponents or looking at things you want them to see in terms of 
other film that you've maybe put together that you go over uh, something you want them to do? How, how much time do you spend on that? Uh, it's not as much as I would like, admittedly. Um, you know, with just CJ and myself, there's there's a lot to manage, you know, just day to day operationally uh, between practices, JV, varsity, um, and all the other things that go along, administrative things that go along with running a team. Um, in an ideal world with a little bit of a larger staff, we'd be able to, you know, delegate that to maybe one of the assistants to kind of pull some clips from, you know, go scour YouTube for <laughs> for stream games in the past um, and be able to pull out a few clips and, and even look at our, at our own um, stuff. I, I definitely like, you know, I use um, CRSN. I, I pull kids in and individually and, and point out some, some particular plays that I think are, are most meaningful. The one thing we have to remember is that unlike adults, you know, NHL or, or even, you know, college or junior level, um, you know, high schoolers have a limited attention span, so you can't sit in there and do an hour's worth of uh, video. Otherwise, they, they start to check out after about 15, 20 minutes. So you got you to be effective. You got to pick out the moments that are really meaningful, that really displays either a good thing or a negative thing, um, or hopefully both. You can show a couple of different clips and, and be able to highlight those, those areas, that, especially if it was something you, you talked to them about in the game, to be able to reference back and, and get it back in their head again. So... Before we talk to, to Will, one last thing. Um, how important to you as a coach is time spent in the weight room? Um, it's, it's a little tricky in a co-op situation. It's, it's especially important to me um, in, the, in the off season. Um, in season, I mean, we are going virtually every day. Um, so, you know, our, our only off days are really Sunday. So the expectation there is you know, they got to do what they need to do. Um, in the off season, we're hopefully to put a program together um, either with a local gym in the area or again, it's difficult getting kids in co-ops to get to different schools for weight training, but it is important. I mean, you know, you don't want to get bumped off box. I think you saw it in a lot of our earlier games this year, like we were, we were kind of weak on sticks, you know, box were getting stripped off of us uh, pretty easily. And, and that, that just comes down to simple strength and conditioning. So um, it, it is an incredibly important part of the game. You have to be physically fit. Um, you have to be strong and have good balance. You don't get bumped off pucks. So, Well, great answers, Coach, and I appreciate you making time for us as always. Let's Absolutely. bring number four in, senior Will Shafolius. Now, Will, you have, uh, you've had three different coaches since you've been a Hilltopper, and, and I know that you know every coach has just a little bit of a different philosophy. Um, if you could, just kind of in in general terms give us kind of the difference between the, the systems you had tim ebner of course and tim franzini and now coach podrick how, how much has that affected uh, your style of play based on the way you came up through tornado youth hockey um so i think with ebner um to be honest with ebner it was kind of different um because i wasn't really like on that was the year i wasn't on varsity i was a full jv kid so I didn't really know Ebner that much, but um, so I didn't really under, know like the systems and stuff, but uh, with like Franzini, um, uh, Fran I would say with Franzini uh, that, um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of blanking out here. Um, was, was Tim, was Tim re real involved in, in, in your growth as a hockey player or, or did you work primarily with uh, Jerry and, and, and the assistant coaches? Uh, I would say he was involved. Like, uh -huh. I mean, it was different though, just being like, I don't like my, that was what my sophomore year and my junior year. Um, I mean, it was definitely different because my sophomore year, I uh, was on uh, a fourth line. So I didn't really play that much, but, you know, obviously practicing uh, with varsity, I feel like I developed uh, a lot that year because I was able to play with uh, kids, you know, that were highly skilled like CJ. And then my junior year, I would say I probably worked more with like the assistants, uh, just because you know I think you know with Franzini and had his uh, back problem uh, that year, so he wasn't really able to be on the ice as much. But um, I mean, I would say I developed pretty well those years. I mean, but I think I, if I had to pick a year as far as like where I developed with the coaches, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I would actually say. I developed the most with uh, Coach Mick because, I mean, I think we worked so much on skill stuff, and I've noticed that I think I became a more, like, active player um, in games and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. really all I have to say. Yeah, no, great. I mean, a great response, and, and, and I think you're right. I mean, I think your offensive game picked up 
last year when, when you were playing with certain players, I think, uh, you know, you were able to show what you could do offensively and, and you show you got some wheels. And, and, and then I think, you know, with coach Mick, you've had such a, a big role with the team, you know, whether it be a, a forward uh, or whether it be now a defenseman and, and the things that you maybe have to learn, the things you had to pick up to take that role. And, and, and so I think you, you've done a great job and obviously coach, I, I think you got to say this. And if you could jump in for just a second, I mean, tell us your honest opinion, but to have a player who can be versatile like that. And, and also Thomas Bryant stepping back on D as well, who are normally forwards. That means a lot to the team, correct? Oh, absolutely. I, I actually warned Will earlier in the year. I'm like, you might play some defense. And then we kind of got some players back and then we lost some players again. So, so he kind of knew that that was, that was hopefully coming. Um, yeah. I mean, you need, you need kids that are willing to go wherever, um, you know, to help the team out and, and having utility players, any, any, you know, team in any sport, any league, doesn't matter. You know, they always want utility players that can play whatever position. It's it's because you never know what resources you're going to be missing in a year. You don't know what's who's going to get hurt, who's going to be sick, you know, or, or what or ineligible or whatever the case may be. And you need to fill those gaps and you only have limited resources. So to have someone that you can fill multiple gaps with is is just critical to team success. Absolutely. Will, one last thing before we wrap things up here and get ready for face off. Um, you've, uh, you know, you're in your last year, uh, you're going to be graduating. What is Will Shafolius's plans afterwards? Have you thought about some of the things that you might uh, take up next to you off to school, to trade school, to take a job? Uh, you know, what, what do you, what do you got coming up next? So I plan on going to, uh, Arizona state. Ooh, um, I went there. You did? <laughs> yeah. A long time ago. Oh, <laughs> It's good. Yeah, it's so a I, beautiful school. It's it's fantastic. No, it's really cool. So yeah. I'm really excited to go there. Um, I'm going there. Um, I'll be majoring in uh, marketing. And um, you too. Yeah. In, that's <laughs> funny. Mar marketing, political <laughs> science. That's what I what I went. Rick, for. he's going to be your next color commentator. I think. That's, <laughs> I think that's the math he's going on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, and then obviously, as far as that goes, um, after school I think uh I don't know I, I haven't really thought too much like specifically as far as what my career like path would look like in marketing but um I don't know I mean I I plan on maybe I, I've kind of explored certain options as far as uh trying to act add a uh, technical background to uh my degree just so then I can work with you know tech companies and stuff but overall I mean as far as after college goes it's kind of just a kind of like a dynamic situation that I can't really think too much about because so many things change so sure no absolutely well there's some sales in the in your family there that you know obviously you, you kind of yeah. follow in the footsteps there but uh, we'll, we'll see where it leads you to but congratulations on that we wish you the best of luck in the next steps and we wish you the best of luck the rest of the season we're hoping playoffs some success advancing and that kind of thing and then uh, you know all the great stuff that'll happen for you after that thanks for joining us all right thank you all right, the opening face-off is next here on the Cooley Region Sports Network. We've got two games for you this weekend, and uh, here's your first one right now. Noble Insurance Service, building strong relationships to secure your future. Whether you need homeowners insurance, auto insurance, life insurance, or commercial insurance, we work with a variety of companies. That ensures you get the protection you need. At Noble Insurance, we're committed to creating a partnership so that as your needs change, your coverage keeps pace. Call Noble Insurance Service and let's create a plan personalized just for you and your needs. Cooley Golf Bowl is the number one recreation facility in Onalaska, but it's also a perfect place to watch the big game or stop in after a hard day's work to unwind with great food and drinks. Cooley Golf Bowl has you covered with an extensive menu, including great choices from apps to entrees and mouth-watering daily specials like burgers, tacos, prime rib, tenderloin tips, shrimp, fish, and roasted chicken are just a few of the daily specials. Cooley Golf Bowl Sports Bar and Grill. Visit them online at CooleyGB.com and sign up for their e-club to get special offers and promotions.
Do you feel the need, the need to be free? Totally free checking, that is. Cooley Bank can satisfy that need. His free, her free, your free. Free means something different to everyone. Totally free means Cooley Bank has you covered. Free debit card, free online banking, free bill pay, free mobile banking, free e-statements, free interest checking, and a free gift when you open your account. Do you feel the need to be free? Totally free? Go to any Cooley Bank branch or CooleyBank.net for more information. Cooley Bank, member FDIC. When you start craving the great taste of Chicago-style Italian beef, sausage, Vienna beef hot dogs, or off-the-spit gyros, or the new Italian sub sandwich packed with imported Italian lunch meat and provolone, it's time for you and two or three of your friends to hop in your ride and fill that crave with great Chicago food with attitude. Gino's Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs in Onalaska. You can also have Gino's delivered right to you through the Eat Street app and grab it. Gino's Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs. The real taste of Chicago. Fall and winter are fast approaching, and CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal suggests you leave that fall cleanup and snow removal to them. CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal can provide all the services you need to make your neighbors green with lawn envy. Mowing, trimming, edging, landscaping, gutter cleaning, and they even work with Grace's Pet Waste Removal to be your complete lawn cleanup solution. Go to CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal on Facebook to get a free quote for your fall cleanup and snow removal needs, or give them a call at 608 792 2874 CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal, a cut above the rest. Maureen's Volkswagen La Crosse is committed to enhancing both your buying and ownership experience. Your place where happiness matters in the Cooley region. Our 2021 Volkswagen inventory includes the economical Jetta, the reliable Passat, the very popular Tiguan, the family friendly Atlas, and the red hot Atlas Crossport. On top of Maury's Buy Happy Promises, your new Volkswagen comes with a four-year, 50,000-mile warranty, a five-year no-cost car net, and a two-year no-cost maintenance. Visit us at Maury's Volkswagen La Crosse. We are always working for a sustainable tomorrow. That's our promise. A promise doesn't change when things get tough. These are unprecedented times, and that promise of who we are and what we stand for can be seen on the faces of our 45,000 teammates. We could not be prouder of them as they continue to be there for our customers, for our communities, and for each other, today and tomorrow. At Ultra, we believe in financial health and that good habits start early. Learning how to save and spend responsibly can make a big difference in a child's life and yours. Give your child the independence they want with Ultra's Live Your Life Spend Account. It's a free account designed for money-savvy teens and young adults with all the extra features you'll love. No minimum balance and no monthly fees, free online and mobile banking, plus cash back debit card rewards. Ultra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life. Rick Frankie, Dean Lonsborough back with you from the Omni Center. You can see purple coloring, that means it's introduction time. Jennifer Zeps is in the box. Here are your introductions for the uh, Homestead Highlanders and the Onalaska Hilltoppers. And our own Hilltoppers co-op. And now with a starting lineup for the Highlanders. In goal, number 31, Connor O'Brien. On defense, number 21, Jackson Lord. Also on defense, number four, Jack Wojnowski. Starting at forward, Number six, Rocco Cicerello. Also at forward, number seven, Michael Birmingham. And finally at forward, number 10, JJ Perez. And the rest of the Homestead Varsity Hockey Team. The Highlanders are coached by Tony Navarre. And now let's hear it for your Hilltoppers. In goal, senior, number one, Noah Clement. On defense, senior number four, Will Chevolius. Also on defense, senior number 15, Quinn Anderson. Starting at forward for the Hilltoppers, junior number eight, Colin Como. At forward, senior number 13, Peyton Jones. And finally at forward, sophomore number 14, Noah Gillette. And the rest of the Hilltoppers varsity hockey team. The Hilltoppers are coached by head coach Mick Padra and his assistant CJ Lass. 
Our team managers are Grace Jacobson and Danielle Lass. The referees for this afternoon's game are Dennis Fenton and Connor Rowan. The linesmen will be Dalton Rowan. And if you would now please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Highlanders and Hilltoppers just about set to begin here from the Omni Center in Onalaska, Wisconsin. Glad you're with us here on this Friday night. I'm Rick Frankie. Alongside me is Dean Lonsborough, our cameraman, Jeff Ross, always doing a fantastic job. Good to have him with us yet again. Homestead comes in 8-10. and 10. They are 1-2-0 in the North Shore Conference, averaging just under four goals per game, giving up 3.3 goals per game. Power play good at 29% effective, and the PK solid at 80%. Hilltoppers come in 6, 10, and 0, 3 and 1, the MVC champions. Uh, they are uh, pretty much, uh, you know, in terms of where you look at Hilltoppers and goal scoring, they're low at 3.3 goals per game and high on the goals against at 4.7. Unusual numbers for Hilltopper hockey, but a lot of transition here. New head coach and, and uh, not as much veteran leadership as years past. So those are numbers that uh, they'll hope to get. Uh, improving soon. 19% of the power play, 72% of the PK, both numbers you want to work on and increase. All right, let's get to the starting line here for the Highlanders. It is JJ Perez with Michael Birmingham at center and the right wing, Rocco Cicerello. Reminds me of the old Dino Cicerelli name. I love it, it's a great hockey name. He seems like he's quite the character. He's a great kid. That's the forward line there. And of course, for the Hilltoppers, you got Colin Como, Noah Gillette, and Peyton Jones at four, we'll get to all of the lines here in our next stoppage. The Highlanders with the puck inside the hilltop around. Puck pushed to the corner. Physical play by Shafolius to pin a Homestead forward. Now working it from the right wing wall. And it'll be chipped ahead to the blue line. Just a little too far for Birmingham. Now stepping up. Left wing dump in there by Jackson Lord. Lord tries to stuff it in from the near post. He'll get a second chance now as he skates out to the near circle. Drop back left point. Screen sent up in front off the stick of J.J. Perez. Now the Hilltoppers in transition. Of change. Colin Como the other direction. Como dangles, holds up, spins and shoots, and the save is made by Connor O'Brien. That was a nice move there by Como, and you know he's got it in him. Yeah, he's got it. Here's a dump. That hit skaters in the neutral zone, but still going to be an icing. Faceoff going to come back the other way. Defensive pairings. Uh, the first line of defense is Jack Wanowski and Jack Lord. He's good. Yeah, team Lord, Wisconsin. Lord, Lord's and, a good player. And Wanowski, obviously a captain, obviously talented. Second line for Homestead, Sean West with Ty Deemer and Marky Schimpf will get to the defense next stoppage. And it'll be dumped in back behind the net. Quick to pick it up was Malecki. Now into the neutral zone it comes. Back for the Hilltoppers on defense was Myrie. And a tangle up at Offside. the blue line there, offsides. Line number three for Homestead. It'll be Ian Vincent with Nate Pound and Jonah Miller. Defensive pairings, the second one. Oliver Malecki, Jaden Lopez. D-line three, Hunter Lord and Chris Ochter. D-line four, Ben Wareska and Dylan Tim. As the puck comes into the Homestead zone, it's quickly thrown back out after a hit. 
And it'll be yet another icing. Hilltoppers, second line. Thomas Bryant with Gavin Schuster and Carter Hayes. Derek Lenzer with Sawyer Meyer, the third line, and they'll rotate another forward. Defensive pairings, Quinn Anderson with Will Shafolius. Gus Weiner with Jack Tillman. Aiden Myrie will also rotate, as you heard him in there earlier. It's a pretty seasoned uh, forward lineup for uh, Homestead with juniors and seniors. Oh, that was put right out in front. Chance for the Hilltoppers here early on, but not able to connect with a stick on a shot as it dumped into the Hilltopper end. No icing this time. Set up in front, bouncing puck, and chipped up over the net as the Hilltoppers will get to it along the near boards. That was Carter Hayes trying to work at Enwall. Now from Gretzky's office, they try to flip it out in front. They score. Good set up in front, and it's 1-0 early on. As I think that was Sean West who popped out in front of the yep. net to poke it home and gives the Highlanders the They're early 1-0 lead. Just relentless down behind the net. Just got to find your guy and sort it out because they're going to keep pressing. This is the way they play. They, they play hard, fast. Early 1-0 lead, the sophomore. It's his first goal of the season. Well, along with four assists, dumped in there by Noah Gillette. Now Wanowski gives it a ride all the way down, and that'll be another icing. So faceoff will move back into the homestead, and their starting goaltender is Connor O'Brien. He's a sophomore. 5'10", 140, 8'10", 3.06 goals against, 895 save percentage in one shutout. Starting netminder for the Hilltoppers, of course, Noah Clement started every one of them. A senior, 6'10", 4.67, 869 save percentage, one shutout. Quinn Anderson flipped up in for the Hilltoppers. Jackson Lord, shadowed by Noah Gillette, takes it into the neutral zone. Poke check by Como. That hits a forward, streaking into the zone. Birmingham chases to the end wall. Hilltoppers from their own corner. Stretch pass off Gillette's stick. Sent right back in here by the Highlanders. Bounced up to Como. Nice no look off the wall to Gillette. Gillette dangles, then drops it back. Como rips it wide. Drop back behind the net. Hilltoppers. Noah Gillette yet again. Bumped off the puck. And now it's Homestead. Bank pass up the left wing. On the stick of J.J. Perez. And a ripper goes just breezing right past the goaltender, Clement. Almost had too many men there. Malecki up to left wing. Rocco Cicerello puts it on net. Easy save for Clement. Drops it off to the D. Myrie bank pass to the left wing wall. The Highlanders drop it right back in, down and around. That shot blocked off the stick of Nate Pound, and it goes out of play for a whistle. Take a couple seconds here to thank some of our great sponsors. Make these broadcasts possible. Our thanks to Kurt Papp State Farm Insurance Agency. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Center. Gentle, natural, and effective care. Hilltoppers trying to get it out of their zone off the draw. They do get it to the neutral zone, shoveled right back in by Ochter. Gus Weiner looking on the tape. Nice little dish from Schuster. Had uh, Thomas Bryant cutting up center, but he couldn't handle it. And it's dropped right back in here by the Highlanders for icing. <clears throat> they need to start looking for the center because they're pinching on the, on the strong side forward. And if they just delay a little bit, that center's open all day. And they should be listening to you, Dean. Dean you're, Dean's wearing his, his third different jacket in the last three broadcasts. You know, he was going was going to AAA Junior Jets, and then he was he was tradesman. going uh, tradesman, Oregon tradesman, and now he's he's flashing the wild garb to That's, try to get these kids to think he's a absolutely he's a scout from the Minnesota Wild. Yeah. Quinn Anderson off the draw. Hilltoppers put it, it wide of the net, bounces off the back. Anything to motivate him. Yeah. Well, hey, it doesn't hurt, right? That'll be dumped down by Shafolius. Como chasing. He'll tangle up with Hunter Lord. Now on the stick of Deemer. And up center they come. Jaden Lopez. Now well, that dish was right to Sean West, and he was looking for number two, but he couldn't pull the trigger on the uh, 
stick there, and it'll be dumped down by the Hilltoppers for, yes, you know it, icing. Yeah, there's been a lot of whistles here in the first uh, four minutes, four and a half minutes. There have been a lot of icings. Yeah. I, think, I think I can count five here in yes. her 12-23 remaining in the first period. Late change here for Coach Patrick. Como, Gillette, Jones line out. Bryant line in. Here's a chance again for West. Oh, he had it set up in front. Did Deemer, but he could not get the shot off. Now from the right point, there's a screen set up, and it might have caught the pad and went off into the corner. Deemer takes a pop there from Shafolius, who gets the puck out, and I believe it will be yet another icing. That's what you got to do if they're putting pressure like that on. That's their only option high up the glass or out of down the other end. More icing than an episode of Ace of Cakes. <laughs> Draw comes back into the hilltopper end here after the icing. 11.57 left here in the first period. one nothing in favor of Homestead. It's the first time I can ever recall the hilltoppers playing Homestead. Yep. Not when we were there. You know, would you let nice arrowhead. flip out to Colin Como? Yeah, in the, in the state uh, quarterfinals, I do yep. believe. Uh, we were there for it. That was before the, the, the whole TV thing. It was just radio. Ooh, that redirected front. Oh, that saved by O'Brien. A big chance there. Best one of the day for the Hilltoppers Absolutely. so far. Here's Como working it in the offensive zone with Jones. Jones tried to center to Gillette, but broken up by the Highlander defense. Held in left point. Sent by Weiner on net. O'Brien, easy save. Decides to cover it up and get the face off. Good shift by that line. Hilltoppers get a couple of shots on net now. 6-2. Homestead with the advantage in shots. Thomas Schuster line out there with Carter Hayes at forward. Bryant not able to do much with it there. And up ice they come. Three on two. Highlanders. J.J. Perez dished to center, and that shot was off target. Comes all the way back into the Highlander end. Myrie trying to track that puck down. Now a two-on-one opportunity here for the Highlander. Shot from the right circle goes wide off the stick of J.J. Perez, one of the assistant captains. 15 goals on the season. Wanowski back. Nice stretch up to J.J. Perez. Perez cross ice pass. Now dug out off the wall. And Quinn Anderson plays D to D, but it's intercepted in the slot, and he's able to make up for it there. Here's the dump in by Jack Tillman. Highlanders. Stick comes out of the hand there at Tillman. Up the right wing, here they come. With the puck is Shrimp. And not able to do much there. There's one that comes right on net and they score. They just kept persisting yes. and eventually they get it in. It just took a little bit of time, but it's now a 2-0 hockey game with the Highlanders leading the Hilltoppers and Jackson Lord's fourth of the season. I just like the way they play it with some passion. It looks like it means something to them. They're just, they're relentless. It's, it's, it's what every team should have. Hilltoppers need to get back in this hockey game as they trail here early. Two to nothing, 10 minutes remain here in the first period. Como trying to rush it up the slot. Now Gillette with a chance, and O'Brien able to hold the line as the net comes off of the far post. This line's had some chances. They have. Well, this is it. This is the line that's going to you know, get the production for the Hilltoppers, you would think, if there's going to be production. Yep. You know, I, at being the home team, I would actually throw him out there against the second line of the Highlanders from time to time, see if he can catch him off. He's trying to do some stuff, see so short shift in some of it. Here's the dump in, and uh, that, that word we've said more than I like to say here in a period already, icing. It just gives me more time to mention the great businesses support our broadcasts, like Big Al's Pizza in downtown La Crosse. Quality and tradition since 1979. 
Quick turn around, they score! Oh, right off great, the draw, Peyton draw Jones, Jones beats O'Brien. And that makes this a two to one hockey game. Jones gets the Hilltoppers on the scoreboard with number nine. That was a really nice face off by Jones. You know, I think the karma was there. You saw Peyton helping out the yeah. team manager, yep. putting the pucks in the bucket after warmups. You know, I gave him a standing ovation for it because, you know, when, when a guy, it's a senior is out there doing that kind of stuff, you that know, means team player. You see something like that with the seniors because it's coming to an end. Yep. Um, this is the end of the season, and then the little things start to matter a little more. So, impressive. So I'm happy for him. Phil in the corner, pretty proud. Here's Carter Hayes now into the zone. Low shot right off the pads. The butterfly was O'Brien. They don't want to touch it there. Danced around the puck there. That was <laughs> very clear he was not going to touch that puck. Nate Pound was coming into the zone there, bouncing puck right in front of the net. Weiner's smart to get it out of there into the corner. Now Myrie uses the end wall of the fireboards. High stick knocks that down by Schuster. Cross ice go. pass by Ochter, and it's stolen. Here comes Thomas Bryant. Bryant down low, and the penalty going to be called. He may give him a penalty shot. As he crosses shot. into the net, O'Brien able to make the stop. He gave him the penalty and shot. And there it too. is. How about that? I we got that. a penalty <laughs> shot. We don't get those all too often, folks. Fasten your seat belts. High school hockey penalty shot. All right, Jeff, follow this one closely. <laughs> Thomas Bryant gets the, the, one of the most exciting things you can have happen in a hockey game as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Ochter's pass stolen. Bryant, the rush, he gets his legs taken out, goes into the net, and now it's a penalty shot. I believe Thomas a left-handed stick. The sophomore from Lacrosse Central High School. Big moment, he could tie this hockey game up. Connor O'Brien between the wickets. Well, it could be Malachi or it could be Maliki. I'm not really sure. Usually it's I want to say, yeah. Here comes Bryant, up by Swick, dangle, down, and he scored. No, he didn't. Oh, he was kept out. Recovery. Oh, my goodness. At first, I thought he got it around the goaltender, O'Brien, but great. he was able to hold that far post and not beat the goaltender. That was a great recovery by O'Brien. So O'Brien gets the big stop. Thomas O'Brien a bit dejected, but, hey, he had the opportunity, and you learn from those. Work behind the net to the corner. Jackson Lord got it up to the neutral zone. Back is Weiner. Weiner right off the stanchion, and that comes out of play. So they'll drop the puck again here. This time it wasn't icing for the stoppage, but our thanks to Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling Service, Lacrosse's leader in waste management solutions. Also, every plumbing and heating proudly serving the Lacrosse area since 1969. Look out. Right off the draw, they score. Redirect in front, and guess who? Rocco Rock. Cicerello. He scores his 14th of the season, and just like that, it's the Highlanders with a 3-1 to one lead. I saw that right off the draw. <laughs> I did hear the under your breath look out. <laughs> Dean providing color. <laughs> He even took a photo of us and put it on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. That was nice. You weren't wearing a 49ers jersey this time. People no, might like it a little bit better. No, they were going crazy when I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes Peyton Jones again into the zone. Nice low shot. He didn't look like he was going to shoot it. It was a no-look shot. And O'Brien had the stick save. Now well, battle in the corner here. Jones flipped it back, held up. Weiner with a shot with a screen set up in front, blocked. Now quick turn around, they score! score! Off the defenseman's leg and in. Standing in front was Michael Birmingham and it hit his leg. And the Hilltoppers come right back. You like goals? We got them here on Cooley Region Sports Network. <laughs> Five in the first. <laughs> it's only half over. <laughs> <laughs>
That's called storming back. This is like a Wanakee Hilltopper game oh. days of old. I think that's Como. And if that's who I thought it was that it shot was. that puck off the leg, Como gets his 10th. Here's Thomas Bryant again with an opportunity. Not able to get the shot off, though, as he gets knocked into the corner. Now it's Schuster with the puck. Schuster dangling around, looking, looking. High shot, redirected, triple it's towards in. the goal line, and in. Hilltoppers tie it up. Three, three. I like the passion they're playing with right now. It's something switched. Now they look hungry. That's the way they got to play the rest of the game. That thing was trickling in slow motion, folks. I heard chariots of fire as it was approaching the goal line. <laughs> is that a movie? It is a movie. You you know the one where they race? <laughs> yeah, yeah, chariots of fire. It's a, I, I don't think they actually race chariots, but. Here's the puck in the near circle. Uh, Homestead trying to answer. They had a player in front. That was Shimp. And the Hilltoppers drop it in for an icing. So, you know, in between the seven icings. or eight icings, how about the action? Yep. Six goals. Yeah, if there was no whistles, it'd be incredible. This is not a game either goaltender will want to watch the first period no. back on. I have a short memory on that one. Yep. 3-3, three, three, offensive hockey here in the first period. 7.36 left. And a backhand saved by Clement, juggled and then scooped it with a trapper. Shots are 10-10. 3-3 ten, ten. Three, three on the scoreboard. They gotta make sure they get this guy out because when they win the faceoff, it's, they, they get it to the net in a hurry. They do, quick snap again. Both goalies just have to be ready at all times. Shots are coming with screen set up everywhere. Lots of people packed in front of the net. Here once again is Cicerello. Cicerello trying to work it through three Hilltoppers. Now it's Noah Gillette comes out with it, hits Como. Como, one defender to beat. Como lost it into the near boards, a no look backhand pass, and take it away, three on two, back the other way. Here comes the Highlanders. Highlanders got it right wing with a little disorganization, cutting across as the puck came off the stick of Birmingham. Birmingham, another one of those assistant captains, a junior, 16 goals coming in, 11 assists, 27 points. You look at their power play goals, they got a whole mess of them. Well, Myrie, the whiner, up to Como. Nice work off the wall. Collins sends it to Gillette. Bank pass. Goes offside. Off sides. And comes back out. High school basketball this coming Tuesday. Scotty Gran and Tom Yashinsky have the call as the Toma Timberwolves do battle with the Onalaska Hilltopper boys. Boys basketball Tuesday. One more regular season hockey game. We'll have our last Avalanche game as the Avalanche will host the La Crescent Lancers, a game that was supposed to be played earlier in the year, postponed due to, yeah, you know what. <laughs> and it's in the neutral zone. Quinn Anderson throws it in off the end wall. And a clear here by the Highlanders. Well, they're waving it. Yeah, they waved off the icing. Should have been, but they I thought it was a nice. Yeah. They congregate here in the corner. I'm not going to ride Toast kids. Tim Rowan's boys are out here. Here's Carter Hayes in right wing. Hayes with a shot and the stab of the glove by Connor O'Brien. Yeah, I like the turnaround here by the by the Hilltoppers. They're Likewise. playing with a lot more energy than they would when they first came out. Yep. 11-10 now. They have a one-shot edge. Thomas Bryant does not win that draw. Islanders come out with it. Two on two. Up the right wing, around the defense, and high top shelf goal snipe. And it's now a 4-3 hockey game. 220 pounder there. Defenseman just sat back and let him blow right by. And Mark Schimpf scores his fifth goal of the season. 
It's like the defense just said, hey, I'm not going to get in his way. No. <laughs> He's got some flow, too. <laughs> <laughs> Parted like the Red Sea. Six oh two left. Four three now. Homestead. Well, if you like scoring, you're at the right place. Well, at, at, yeah. <laughs> Man, the this isn't is my kind of game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Defenseman, we, we, we we're, we're more about the uh, helping the goaltenders. Let's defend the house, my yeah. God. Seven goals and still five fifty one left in the first period. It's got to slow down at some point, right? There's a Hilltoppers shorthanded at defense all season long. Lots of players missing from what was expected to be on the roster this year. Gillette kicks it off the wall. Now he'll work it out. To Peyton Jones, right wing. Jones snaps it into the corner. First to it is Winowski. He can't clear. Quick turnaround by Jones into the corner, way off target, but that more to get position for Gillette. That looked like a hole there. Now Como in front, there's Jones, and he shot just wide left. Now Payton out of the corner, trying to tap it back to Gus Weiner. That's trouble, though. And that cut, touched the glove yep. of a skater along the bench line, and that's the reason for the whistle. I'm and really happy I'm really happy with the way uh, Jones is playing. The, way, yep. the last four games, this is my fourth game, and uh, him, he's shooting the puck low, and he, he's got a nice little snap. Um, he used to shoot it high all the time, and now he's just, you know, that, that six inches off the ground, and he's picking his spots. There's a shot, trouble in front, and just cleared out to the corner. I was just going to say, Peyton Jones' dad has one of the biggest beards around, but then there's a guy from Homestead with a beard that's, I think it's like two Phil Jones beards. I'll, I'll bring my son Jordan up here. Yeah, I know, I saw his beard uh, last weekend. <laughs> here comes Homestead towards the front of the net. Hilltoppers clear, and they do get it past the right point. And the regroup here is Hunter Lord back to pick it up. Stretch on the tape to Cicerello. Nice dish back right side. Here they come. Here's now left wing, and just tapped off the stick. Uh, they got four guys Jayden below Lopez. the dot. Look at that. Now Birmingham trying to work it around the Hilltoppers. D not able to do it, but it's held in again by Sanchez. Pass to the slot. Nice D by Shafolius. Schuster with a backhand clear, but that will be an icing. 4.15 remains here in the first period, 4-3. They certainly like to engage their defensemen, which puts a lot of stress on you, especially if you're weak on the back end. One shot edge here for the Alaska Hilltoppers. And they win the draw to the Highlanders. Boy, they have a play designed right in front. Yep. It's all scripted. It's all <laughs> they knew exactly what they wanted to do off the draw. Yep. Back the other direction comes Bryant. Bryant flips it on that easy glove save for O'Brien. So what they did is they, they took the draw back, went back to the point, left and then, point, and then right back yeah. to the circle looking well, that's for a one-timer. It, it, it wouldn't be hard to, to defend it. You're just going to go in and say, this is your responsibilities, and make sure you go out and front that D so he can't make that pat. A backside pass. So it's correctable. You can see a lot of the players in the next game tonight. We will not be broadcasting that one. The Avalanche taking on West Bend, but they're all in here watching to see what uh, they play tomorrow because uh, the Avalanche will swap opponents with the Hilltoppers. Yep. Like I said, it's nice that you can get some other parts of the state over here. Yeah. Like I said, this is the first time. Of course, you, you notice the jerseys for home, so the cancer. Uh, jerseys, they they uh, they have the the uh, pink tie there, of course the ribbon, and uh, you know so many have been affected by cancer, you know, and they've had uh, it hit the coaching staff and family members and stuff, and and uh, so that's the reason for the jerseys. They've worn them a couple times here. Como has his pass stolen, and back the other direction come the Highlanders, holding up with Steamer. Here's oh, they had to give it go to the front of the net, but. Schimpf not able to uh, get a stick down low on it. Here's Como. He hits Jones and a nice, nice. kick save in the butterfly by O'Brien. 
back the other direction. That was Cicerello. Puck squirts to the slot. A little too far for Gillette. Line change for the Hilltoppers, but it would be an icing and come back into the Hilltop around with 2.58 left here in the first period. Yeah, we used to uh, do a home and home with uh, Cedarburg in West Bend for a couple years. There was about three years, we, two years we went over there, played West Bend and Cedarburg, and then one year they came here. Off the draw, it's picked up by Quinn Anderson, the Hilltopper veteran defenseman, not able to clear. Now from the near circle, Birmingham. Pushed off the puck by Shafolius, but the Highlanders still inside the zone. Again, worked down low by Wanowski. Now it's Cicerello. Cicerello's pass goes back behind the net. Birmingham chases for it. Hilltoppers get a stick on it. Still trapped in the zone. Here's Cicerello. He flips it off of the backhand to the right circle. Shot save made by Clement. Now Schuster. Chipped it to center. Couldn't hook up with Hayes. Back is Shafolius. Shafolius got it up to Schuster again. Schuster around one. Schuster in left wing. He tries to go through 2D. That's not going to work. And Cicerello not able to get to that puck before Peyton Jones. Jones works it off the right wing wall all the way down, and that will be another icing. What is the record for icings? I don't know, but we're got to be getting close to it. It's, like I said, you know. Ace, Both teams. It's like Ace of Cakes, the holiday baking challenge. There's so much icing. I cannot have cupcakes. I, I, I am not supposed to have cupcakes either. <laughs> they are not on the list for either one of us big, big fellas. <laughs> no. I, I don't mind some of your some of the stuff you cook though. It's all healthy. Yeah, well, not, not that, all. That's not on the list right now either. <laughs> oh, nope. not. Vegetables and protein. In the corner. Super exciting. Grinders game going on. Finally it's worked back up to the left point. Dropped into the corner by Jackson Lord. Now back behind the net again. They try to set up in front, not able to get it. And it's Como streaking up the right wing. Como holds up, low shot. And the stick save made there by O'Brien. Schimpf, nice touch pass off the wall. Should be a nice. Oh, he waved it. And yeah, waved he it got off there. Again. Big guy got there. It's Jackson Lord, he got some good wheels. This oh, look at this, Como the chance, one-on-one -on -one with O'Brien. The deke, the backhand, the shot goes just wide. Net came off. I'm surprised they didn't blow the whistle. It should be because it's still off. And they have not blown the whistle yet. He goes over to look at it and sets it back on. Because that post is always coming off. It's always this end. It is. I said that to Tim, and he refuses to acknowledge that it's that particular post. <laughs> I don't know why it, Tim Ebner insists that it's not, but he did say he, I had the argument I, with uh, him last night. Yeah. Tapped off the right wing wall there by Octor. Let's put it this way, 90% of them go off on this end. Yep. Okay, if he wants to get technical. Well, I'm with you. <laughs> We're on the same page. We're on, on team far post. Drop back behind the net, Homestead. Trying to work it near wall, and that's gonna do it for our first period of play. Hey, you like goals, it was fun. Four to three, Homestead lead after one period of play. Shots though in favor of the Hilltoppers. A four shot edge, 16 to 12 after one period. Coach Podrick is on the bench. We'll get help from our special friends in the penalty box. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Yep, over to Coach, if you could do that. We'd like to visit with both coaches. I, I talked to Coach Navarre too, and he's expecting the microphone in the second intermission. So you Homestead Highlander fans, we'll get to talk to your coach as well. But Mick Podrick, the rookie head coach for the Hilltoppers Hockey Co-op, has the headset on top and the microphone is on and uh, Coach Podrick, uh, yeah, I can hear you. How All about right. uh, scoring? Uh, you, you like scoring? That was a lot of scoring in that period. I thought it was a defensive gem. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sarcasm, Coach. Well, uh, you, that, gotta, you gotta make light of it somehow. Uh, as a former goalie, I sure don't like to see scores like this. No, but. defenseman for well, me, I'm a, I coached, defensive coach. coach defense for 20 years and I was ready to jump out of the booth here. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, come join us. We could uh, we could use it. I think. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that was uh, that was a lot of pucks in net and a lot of screens on goalies. Goalies not seeing the puck and uh, obviously that's that's one of the strategies you see the Highlanders trying to work in your zone and and uh, I'll tell you what our, what I like best about the period, Mick, and I know uh, we're not wild about all these goals going in, but. But I like the grit that the boys showed after they went down and came back and scored right away and went toe-to-toe with the Highlanders here in the first period. Yeah, I mean, thank God, too, because that could have got ugly really fast. Yeah. Um, it, you know, kudos to them. They found their legs a little bit there, but we have, uh, we've we got a long way to go. That was, to me, one of the more disgusting periods we've had uh, all year. So well, I tell you, Coach, uh, you know, eight minutes in, I, I made a comment while we were talking here, and I just said, Something switched, and then they had a little more energy, a little more get up, uh, a little more pressure. You know, the shots were kind of, you know, off kilter there at the beginning, and then they just kept coming and coming and coming, and that's a good sign. You know, it's a, you're a team that's growing. You know, as you know, as your first year coach, so I did like to see that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we we've been down a few times this year, and it's good to see us uh, climb back into this one. And, you know, they've got pretty much a clean slate here going into the second, so hopefully we come out with a little more energy and and, and take it to them. We're behind you 100%. Coach Mick Podrick, thanks for joining us. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. There's a coach, and uh, he's not happy about the period, but he is no. uh, still in the hockey game 4-3 to three, and had more shots on goal than the Highlanders did in that first period. But he's right. The defense was missing for yep. both teams. Yep. All right, let's take a I'm break. I'm not going to take him up on the uh, coming over and help. No, I don't think you're going to help. I know you're not. You're, you're up here for the, the rest of this one anyway. Uh, we've got your Interstate Wealth LLC intermission report. Uh, that is uh, coming up here in just a moment on the Cooley Region Sports Network. People assume these photo shoots are easy. Just like they assume they can't afford great insurance. But State Farm has rates that fit any budget. What? Can I get a profile? All in the core. For surprisingly great rates to fit any budget, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. And we've had many customers for 50 years, the same customers. I like to call some of our customers charter customers. They were ones that grandpa worked for, dad's been to their house, and now I visit their homes. Uh, sometimes I work for their children or even their grandchildren. Um, it's a really nice connection with community, really. Well, Mom, what do you think? We've been in business for 50 years now. And if we want to continue that 50 years, you better get yourself out the door and get to work. Every time I go to Angelini's Pizzeria and Restaurante in Alaska, I have a problem deciding on which menu items to order because they're all so amazing. I mean, how does one choose between Chicago stuffed pizza with that tangy tomato sauce and luscious cheese, or a deep dish pan pizza packed with flavor, or Angelini's thin crust pizza with that magical crunch? Lasagna, risotto di pesce, lobster linguine, calamari. Man, this is tough. Hey, at least I know I'll finish the meal with cannolis, Angelini's Pizza, Ria, and Restaurante on Highway 35 and on Alaska, you're invited to taste the difference. At Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling, we've been serving the Cooley region for over 35 years, so we know what it takes to meet all your waste and recycling needs. Whether it's picking up the recycling at your local business or taking out the trash at home, we've got you covered. At Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling, we're at your disposal. Imagine if you could feel better and live healthier without drugs or surgery. What if we told you that at Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, we can help you turn that thought into a reality for you and your family with safe, gentle, and effective chiropractic care. At Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, we focus on treating the whole person at one of our multiple locations, located in Southwest Wisconsin. We are a team of family-oriented chiropractors who offer our patients quality care as it relates to nutrition and weight loss, exercise and living a healthy lifestyle. From newborns to seniors and everyone in between, all of our patients can experience the benefits of chiropractic care. Whether you're visiting us because you want to feel better, get out of pain, or even lose weight, 
we want you to know that you've come to the right place on your journey to wellness. Through tailored and specific care plans, we'll create the best treatment for your unique needs. And we don't stop there. We'll listen to your concerns and make you a partner in your care. At Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, we don't just get you well, we'll help you stay well too. Discover the Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Center's difference. Life is full of transitions. You may be transitioning from the education system to the workforce. You may be moving from a single life to a life filled with family. But there may be no bigger transition for us than that of moving out of the workforce and into retirement. Brent Peterson at Interstate Wealth has been helping those in the Cooley region and surrounding communities successfully make that transition since 2006. Brent's mission is to provide sound, professional advice in a manner that eliminates confusion Fusion, provides clarity and promotes fellowship. Being an independent financial advisor, Brent has the flexibility and the freedom to design a plan that truly fits your best interests, thus fulfilling his fiduciary responsibilities. Whether you need investment advice, portfolio management help, life insurance needs, or have social security questions, give Brent a call at 608-790-9925. Interstate Wealth, your road to success starts here. Investment advisory services offered by Virtue Capital Management, LLC, VCM. VCM is a registered investor investment advisor. VCM and Interstate Wealth LLC are independent of each other. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance services. Welcome to the CRSN Intermission Report, brought to you by Interstate Wealth LLC. Your road to success starts here with Interstate Wealth LLC. Now, here's Rick Frankie. Seven goals in that first period, 4-3 to score. Homestead leading on Alaska after one period of play here at the Omni Center. Rick Frankie and Dean Lonsborough with you. A uh, quick uh, chat here about uh, Howie's, the hometown hangout in La Crosse. If you haven't been there before, go check it out. Uh, they will have a brand new burger of the month, a new sauce of the month, and uh, they will have a new cocktail of the month. That'll be coming up in February. Uh, limited time to get that Canadian heat sauce of the month or the BC Burger or the Deep Freeze Cocktail. But if you get there today, you still can get there But uh, and have your, your, your uh, intake of those sauces and all that good stuff at Howie's. So many great things at Howie's. Of course, your great place to watch the UFC fights and all the great sports that you can catch over at Howie's, the hometown hangout in downtown La Crosse. Back with your second period in just a moment on the Cooley Region Sports Network. At Ultra, we believe in financial health and that good habits start early. Learning how to save and spend responsibly can make a big difference in a child's life and yours. Give your child the independence they want with Ultra's Live Your Life Spend account. It's a free account designed for money-savvy teens and young adults with all the extra features you'll love. No minimum balance and no monthly fees, free online and mobile banking, plus cash back debit card rewards. Ultra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life. Noble Insurance Service, building strong relationships to secure your future. Whether you need homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, life insurance, or commercial insurance, we work with a variety of companies. That ensures you get the protection you need. At Noble Insurance, we're committed to creating a partnership so that as your needs change, your coverage keeps pace. Call Noble Insurance Service and let's create a plan personalized just for you and your needs. The big in-stock winter blowout sale is on at Slumberland Furniture. Get year-end savings on everything in stock. Over 20 different sofas in stock and ready to go. Over 50 accent chairs and recliners too. In-stock items can be in your home really fast, even just a few days in some areas. Plus, save an extra 30% off all clearance items in store. Huge store-wide savings. Everything is on sale and shipping is free. The big in-stock winter blowout at Slumberland Furniture. Cooley Golf Bowl is the number one recreation facility in Onalaska, but it's also a perfect place to watch the big game or stop in after a hard day's work to unwind with great food and drinks. Cooley Golf Bowl has you covered with an extensive menu, including great choices from apps to entrees and mouth-watering daily specials like burgers, tacos, prime rib, tenderloin tips, shrimp, fish, and roasted chicken are just a few of the daily specials. Cooley Golf Bowl Sports Bar and Grill. Visit them online at CooleyGB.com and sign up for their e club to get special offers
So lots of goals in the first period. We're getting ready for period number two. Glad you're with us here on the Cooley Region Sports Network on this Friday night. Hope you're staying warm wherever you are. Hope you've got yourself a fresh new libation or whatever it is you like to have while you watch the game and maybe a snack or you can even order food out and have them deliver it to you nowadays. Lots of places around here yep. you can do that. Just don't order them at 1030 because uh, the restaurant's closed, but yet Eat Street will tell you that uh, they are delivering your food. It's being prepared, but there's really nobody in the kitchen preparing it for you. Oh, so don't no. ever fall for that trick. I fell for it last night. It'll come the next day. Yeah, no, it <laughs> won't come the next day. And, and it was never going to come. And they kept lying to me because they have bots at customer service. So you have to be careful about that. But anyway, enough about that. Name correction. Got uh, Jim Gahn, who is uh, he's, he's, he's all over the Highlanders. Uh, he has been uh, Facebook messaging me with pronunciations and so he told me that um, one of the players Jack who is spelled W-O-J-N-O-W-S-K-I who we talked about you know played a little bit with NA3 Milwaukee Power he said Wonowski but I got another message that says Wojnowski and I thought it would be Wojnowski but I followed his lead so blame Jim Gahn on that one <laughs> you thought it was something completely different. Oh, absolutely. You've been calling him what for years? Wojo Wojnowski. No, like Wojohowitz <laughs> from Barney Miller? What, is, what are you talking about? Uh, well, you, right. you already told me English isn't my strong suit. <laughs> That's why I have you here. That's a good pick, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, we're underway here, second period. 4-3 Homestead lead. Puck inside the Hilltopper end. Birmingham with the puck, tries to center to the slot. And then it's backhanded down low by Wojnowski. Then Jackson Lord to the near corner. And finally the Hilltoppers gain control, Peyton Jones. That's a hook. Yeah, he was hassled from behind and Nate Pound had a stick all over him. No whistle. Just underway, second period. This could, this could happen here. Here's Jones with a shot on the screen. Stick save made by O'Connor, and he'll cover it up as Colin Como is lurking yeah, in around the, the crease. Yeah. Yeah. Toppers need this one to tie this game back up. It only took 54 seconds for that first whistle. <laughs> That's a bit of a change from the first period. <laughs> Here's Thomas Bryant out of the corner, trying to work it to the front. Shot saved by O'Connor as Carter Hayes tipped one towards the net. O'Connor gives the shake of the head, talking to his defense. Hey, help me out here. There wasn't a lot of helping out of goaltenders in the first period. No. Here's Bryant again off the draw. Hilltopper's doing good off the faceoff circle. Clear going to get past Myrie, and Myrie will have to retreat. Myrie holds up, then sends it up the right wing wall for Bryant. Bryant taps it past the defense. Chasing after it will be Ochter. Ochter goes into the wall with Schuster. Now to the, from the near corner, Hilltoppers with a steal. Bryant, the shot goes cross crease and rattles off the far wall. And Carter Hayes back to Myrie. Myrie up to Bryant. Bryant with Schuster in the attack zone. Schuster chases off the dump in the corner. Good shift by this line. Yeah. Now here's Bryant again. Open net. They shoot. They score. We're all tied up in the sling of the arrow as the Hilltoppers make it a 4-4 hockey game. Colin Como joined the fray and scores the goal. Another one. Yeah, he came off the bench, snuck back to the backside, and we got a tie game. I'm going to have to work out some sort of a deal. I, I, I don't know if it's okay for high school kids. I know college kids can, you know, do sponsorships and things nowadays. you got to get the lacrosse archery for Colin Como when he yep. scores a goal. He likes that arrow he thing. He does like to fire the arrow. Gillette sent it to center. There's a Highlander who fell backwards. And I think that was Jaden Lopez. He hope he's okay. He looks like he hit his noggin when he fell back. Dump in there by Michael Birmingham. Schuster picks up the assist. There's a chance in front, broken up there 
by Quinn Anderson, but another opportunity. That uh, was wild on the shot there by Birmingham. On the top of the circle of the high slot, shot goes wide. Once again, that was Cicerello. He's got to sort it out right now when they get this much pressure. Peyton Jones trying to find a way out from behind the net. This time he does get it past Wynowski and all the way down, but it'll be icing. That's a good play when you're trapped like that. You get you know, a little bit of a change here. You can see the seniors playing a little, little more, little more effort. I would agree. As it's winding down, the season's winding down, the career's winding down, and there's no reason to leave anything in the tank. You're right, Dean. Again, Homestead wins the draw. Back to the left point. Shot off target, bounced off the glass, and now the Hilltoppers into the neutral zone. Bryant. Bryant and his lane shut off by Wynowski. Out of the corner. Oh, a miss on the hit there by Wynowski. He ended up hitting the wall, but no harm done. Myrie can't find the puck, but he has his defense get back. Oh, turnover. Deemer to the slots. And one too many passes, and they blow the opportunity. Schimpf had a chance for goal number two. But Wynowski wanted to pass it one more time. I don't think he needed to. He Didn't had an open need net. To. He had the net before that pass, so. Okay, we're all right with that for the Hilltoppers. Wynowski, D to D pass. Go another side for Lord. Dump in here by Quinn. Picked up by Wynowski. He'll make a couple head fakes. He'll take it into the zone. Wynowski high slot shot wide right. There's, There's a, a, that could be a five there. Checking from behind or boarding coming up against the Highlanders. And That's another touch one. the puck and another hit which he, wasn't quite close enough to the boards to maybe be a penalty. He may, he may have called the second penalty right over here. We'll see. That was Como that was knocked into the wall, was it, or was it Bryant? That was Bryant. Yeah, six But I think they're going to get one here and one over there. For sure. Now, how, no, I don't one. know how bad this one's going to be. That's a big one right there, I think. The one off the boards will probably be two if he's going to call it. They're assessing things right now, the officials in telling Jenny Zepps what's what. Oh, one of them's a five. They did not call like that. that. Yeah, that's a five then. I have a feeling. They have not put anything up yet. They didn't call the one in the zone here. I didn't think they would. I thought he was too far off the boards, quite honestly. The rule is if you hit him from behind and he goes down, it's two. He yep, didn't give five him five. Minutes. I was right on this one. Dean, I beat you to it. That's all right. You're not wrong often. Ooh, oh, shot on that rebound. Oh, he had a chance, Schuster, but he didn't see the puck. So an all-you-can-eat buffet, and the Hilltoppers get a couple of goals here. Out of the corner, tied hockey game 4-4. Jones slings it on to Quinn Anderson. Anderson off to Gillette, back to Anderson. Anderson looking, he'll get it back to Noah. Noah, oh, looking for the one-timer from Como, not able to get a clean shot. Now Jones drops it down low, that's Schuster. Schuster back to Jones. Peyton Jones looking. Off to Gillette, hops over his stick though, and that'll be loose, sitting on the far side and cleared down all the way here by Homestead. Quinn back to pick it up. Anderson takes it out right side, drops it off left wing. Noah Gillette back to Quinn. Anderson with that flip. Jackson Lord. In the corner, up to Malecki. Now it's Gillette to Jones for the Hilltoppers. Threw that right into a defensive player. And they'll have to chase back into their defensive zone. Hey, there's a <laughs> Cicerello's coming in. <laughs> Wake up. Rocco ain't going to quit. Rocco can fly, and he steals the puck in the neutral zone. Cicerello, nice poke there, though, by Quinn Anderson. But the Hilltoppers sort of laying an egg right now in this sequence of the power play. Clement comes out of the net, saves it for Peyton Jones. Jones, soft dish up to Shafolius. Shafolius beats Schimpf up ice, takes a hit, goes down. Clearing attempt. 
unsuccessful. Held in by the Hilltoppers. But that's going to hop past the blue line, and they're going to have to get back out of the zone. Up the right side comes Lord, cuts the center. Lord towards the net, he goes down, penalty going to be called, and the save made by Clement. Another shot, no whistle yet, and Clement makes the save. Now we're even up, so that five-minute major now just has 250 left on it, and now you're going four on four. Yep. Oh, has the tide has turned in terms of power play opportunity time. Yep, it's... Uh Four on four, you gotta realize it's four on four and spread out. What do you think, you like five o'clock starts or seven o'clock starts? I can go either way. You're okay with either, huh? Okay. I have a job where I can get here early. You do, you, you, you're, as a salesperson, you can freelance a bit. <laughs> it's uh, stuff in front and Clement still didn't have it frozen. Finally the whistle as Schimpf is dumped down in Weiner. the crease. Yeah, Weiner took him down for stepping on his goalie. And why not? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Well, Schimpf is not the guy you'd expect to have the 53 penalty minutes. That's Jackson Lord, number 21. So four on four hockey, and here comes Noah Gillette. Two on one with Peyton Jones. Jones pulls across the line from the circle, just off the glove of O'Brien. Now Gillette backs it down to Jones. Jones off the side of the net. Oh, there it was. And they tried to stuff it in, did Gillette. He's dangling behind the net. Nice little scoop move. Comes out near side with it. Gillette flipped back to Quinn Anderson. Anderson Plug mishandled out. the puck. Chance for a breakaway. Here we go. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. Birmingham with the goaltender. Backhand shoots and scores. Birmingham make quick work around Clement. It's 5-4, four, four on four hockey. And the Highlanders get the lead. Yeah, he doesn't come out of the box. Como was trying to get out, but. No, he does not. Not when it's four on four hockey. 117 left on the Como penalty. 207 left on the Wynowski penalty. Highlanders with the puck. There's Birmingham trying to come out with it. Now it'll be up the right side. Sean West has one goal in this game. It's covered there by Jack Tillman. Now the Hilltoppers up the right side. Carter Hayes into the zone along with Schuster. Shot that one on net. Easy glove save made by O'Brien. Faceoff stays down the Homestead zone. 5 4, 9 25 left. Here in the second period. Just got to keep it together here, not panic. Off the draw, Gus Weiner taps it with a backhand. Jackson Lord uses the end wall to clear, and he gets it down all the way. It'll be icing with the four on four. Not sure if he they'll have a 50 remembered second. that or not. They'll have a 50-second power play here. Yeah, they should have some time. Our thanks to the Crow, Burgers, Bourbon, and Beer in downtown Lacrosse. Also, Noble Insurance Service, building strong relationships to secure your future. It's so warm in here, there's insects flying by. I think Jeff just got, it was taken by surprise. We had one on the computer last night, we couldn't figure out what it was. Here come the Highlanders up left wing. Towards the net, two on one, opening shot and a goal. There it is, number two of the game. Sean West, defense breaks down and the Hilltoppers down by two. West, is that his third or second? Second, second, second? goal, of, yeah, second one of the game. And he scored the game's first goal. Yep. He's a sophomore. Yeah, he's been busy. I mean, he's got some wheels. He's an opportunist. You can see that. He got yep. in the right place at the right time. And here we go again. Rocco Cicerello into the zone. 
Cicerello had his pass intercepted by Noah Gillette. His outlet to Jones, chips it on up right wing. Here's Como. Como towards the net, shoots and scores! Holy moly. Como, the stick, the dirty dangle, and then the snipe right past O'Connor, 6-5. A power play goal for the Hilltoppers. Coach Tony ain't very happy right now. It is not very happy. I don't, I mean, I don't think anybody could be happy with the defensive play in this game. It's like everyone, it's like an all-star game. You know, yeah. it's like no one wants to get in front of the skater. I'm losing my mind right now. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's pathetic defense, but you're seeing some skills of these offensive players yeah. beating goaltenders. They're the ones I feel sorry for. Yep. Yeah. Clement off the paddle into the corner to Quinn Anderson. They still have the power play, so. His third goal of the game is number eight, Colin Como. So Como's got three. He's got the hat trick. Jones He's got the hat right wing wall. Cicerello back on D. Trying to clear. Peyton Jones has it. He got an assist on that Como goal. Quinn Anderson down to the right side to Gillette. Now deep down to Schuster. He'll try. Ooh, I thought he was going to go for the wraparound. Now he quick turn shot it, and uh, O'Brien self defense got a piece of it. And both teams at full strength now after that five minute major. 6 5 Highlanders lead, 7 41 and counting here, second period. Shots are 24 17 on Alaska Co op. Jones drills it around, comes all the way to the firewall. And now a chance for a three on one, but Jones breaks it up. That would have been another Very good possible goal for the Highlanders. Jones comes up large defensively. They had numbers there. I don't know if the defense just doesn't know where to be. I, it's more the pace it, it, is what just, I'm thinking. Because when the one guy they're, went by. They're, they're far too deep all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're afraid of getting beat Well, instead of closing the gap. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, it, it's just so many breakaways. Some of that is not being ready. Both teams. Yeah. Once again, it's Sean West down there. Yeah, two goals after what looked to be none all season. So he's looking for the hat trick after having none. There's Stimp. He tried to put it towards the front. Schimpf has got one goal. Back in the neutral zone. Oh. Wynowski, a little give and go. Wynowski puts it up right wing wall, looking for Schimpf. And now it's Thomas Bryant. Bryant through the legs of Wynowski. Met there at the end wall by Jackson Lord. There's Myrie with a shot blocked in front by Lord. And then it's worked ahead by Lord looking for Schimpf and Myrie, does he win it? Yes, he gets there to the puck first. And then a now nice got stretch a two on one. up to Jones with Como. Jones shoots and O'Brien able to make the stop. I often wonder why guys reach up to hit pucks that are way above their head. Well, I think you just want to make sure you're stopping it. It's like trying to get your, your bearings. And I was not a goalie, a street hockey goalie, a pretty good street hockey goalie, but that's, that's, a, that's a different oh, time. Oh, you got a shot here. Hilltoppers with a puck in the zone. Noah Gillette down low to Como, put it down in front, but now the Highlanders pick it up. Stretch pass, here's a breakaway opportunity for J.J. Perez, and the save is made by Noah Clement. More breakaways, Dean. <laughs> I know if there was a defensive coach on that end of the bench. Defense is in the would, twilight zone. It would have been. Pops towards the front of the net. Another chance there, that was Perez, but he wasn't able to get a stick on it. Then there you go. That gets batted back, but held in here by Homestead. Now here comes Como out with it, along with Gillette and Jones. Como flips it around the D. Como picks it up along the end wall. He's got three already. That no-look pass to Gillette was not on target, that stolen away. A Birmingham. He wants a hook. Got a bit tangled up. Coach Navarre wanted a call. 
Oh, a nice hit there by the Hilltoppers, Peyton Jones with Cicerello. Como to the neutral zone it went. Dump in by Malecki. Weiner with a collision there as he wanted to get it out. Now it's Gillette in front of his own netminder. Backhand past the official into the neutral zone. Lopez. Oh, we got a bad chance. Got it on off to Malecki. Malecki into the zone. Drop pass. Schimpf. Schimpf with a low shot. Nice butterfly kick save made by Clement. We got away with a bad change there. Icing with 441 left here in the second period. 6-5, Homestead. Our thanks to Waste Management, always working for a sustainable tomorrow. You're going to be heading down to Phoenix for the Open. Yes, I am. Oh, well, you're going to enjoy the heck out of that. I'm going to be for a week down there playing golf, watching golf. Hope the weather's good for you there. It should be. Although in Florida, in Fort Myers, it was 35 degrees this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Centering pass. It was. And a backhand clear by Wynowski, but it'll be icing. Our thanks to Angelini's Pizzeria and Ristorante. You are invited to taste the difference. If you're ever out here at the Omni Center, Angelini's just right across 35. You can walk from here to there and then walk back. Watch hockey, eat Angelini's, walk back. Yes, and that is very, very good food. Very good. Stuff I can't hardly eat anymore. Well, right now. It'll be a time it's again. It's coming dude. back. <laughs> it'll be a time it'll be a time again when you get the speedo working, you'll be yep. back over at Angelini's eating. Here's Thomas Bryant off to right wing. Carter Hayes. Sorry if anyone threw up in their mouth for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna come right wing. Dump in here by Homestead. That made you get a drink of water, didn't it, Dean? Yep, I'm speechless. Como to Jones. And it comes right back to Peyton Jones' stick. Oh, it was there. And it stretch pass is going to miss Colin Como and icing with 3.41 left. Well, the crowd kind of filled in here. It did. It did. Look at Mike McCaffrey checking in. He says, good evening, Rick and Dino. Doing a great job as always. <laughs> Who are you kidding, Mike? Yeah. Good to hear from you, Mike. It is. Boy, I miss him around here. Great guy. I see he's he got a new position recently on LinkedIn, and congratulations there. And here's Homestead trying to work it around back to Wynowski. Sent it top of the circle back to Wynowski from the high slot, and yeah, redirected wide. Once again, Wynowski walks it up. Shot with a screen, never made it through. Another chance on the doorstep, they score. Wide open, camped out was J.J. Perez, and he finally gets one in. He's been there all day. Yep. They they sure look for that back door guy a lot. Well, he was completely uncovered, and J.J. did not miss that time. Well, Coach Ebner is still here. Oh, yeah, you think he's going to miss an opportunity to kibitz with teams from out of town? No. He's always out there. He's talking to players. I know. He's making it happen. He's the mayor of the Omni Center, <laughs> Tim Ebner. And the first lady is Jackie Dirks. Yes. She was in the corner last night for the Avalanche game. She, they, was, she was watching me get my head shaved the other day out at the mall. She'll be here in a little bit for the next game as yep. uh, West Bend takes on the Avalanche. 7-5 now, 3-0-2 left. Wheeling and dealing in the zone is Deemer, and he came in just a bit offsides. So Wojcicki gets an assist on that last goal. He was the guy who was working his magic around the zone to set yeah, it up. Yeah. Dumped in by Wojcicki, and now it's Shafolius. Oh, he took a hit and goes down. Lost his skates and went backwards. Oh, and another hilltopper goes down. That was Carter Hayes. Wojkowski sends it down low. That was to West. Pass Schimpf stick. And into the neutral zone it goes. Deemer sent it back to his defensive partner there. And now it'll be picked up by Quinn Anderson. Just slid it by West. But kept in here by the Highlanders. 
Schimpf missed his pass. Hilltoppers clear to the neutral zone. Boy, they got to get the other two guys off here. Jackson Lord shot I from would the just neutral eat zone, and uh, Clemental just, as you said, in your words, ate it at the top of the crease. 25 to 22, the shots, three shot edge for the Hilltoppers, but they're down by two on the scoreboard. Thanks again to Jeff Ross working the camera here for Cooley Region Sports Network. You're lucky to have him. I sure am. It's Gus Weiner who pushed it to the far wall and chipped out of the zone by Colin Como. The Hilltoppers could get one more here. Yep. Get just down by one headed to the third. That would be a better sitting point for sure. Go. Got an icing. Now you got the face off down here. Chip this, this one line in here, Dean. Yeah. Get one goal. This line has been good in the zone, yeah. so you can see if you can get something there. Again, you Highlander fans, we hope to have Coach Navarre from the bench here right after the end of this period. If we get help from our penalty box, they should know by now we're doing it. And I did talk to Coach Navarre oh, briefly. There's a hit hurts. in the corner and another. Ooh, that Hilltoppers That's Cromo. not getting up. He is slowly moving, but he is moving. Trainer coming on out to the corner. And let's just hope that Colin Como just has the wind knocked out of him. That's my hope. He went in kind of awkward. Looks like he's holding his left shoulder. We've seen so many times those collarbone injuries in corners. Those dashers don't give. Nope. So right now the trainer having that conversation Boy, with gonna, Colin. Is he going to give him another five? You know, Collins had a couple of big situations this season where he and, he, and last year well, he's too, up. He's all right. Where he where it looks just horrible, but he comes out of it okay. He did have that thigh injury and uh, groin more, injury earlier in the season. Well, maybe that's what he's he's kind of pulling on his hip. Or yeah, and it was like a hip flexor and a groin. Maybe that's what he's. Yeah, that makes more sense. So though. they're going to look at that. So it's he, another five. It is, and he. But the thing is, you don't have Colin Como out there for that five. And that's that. Hopefully, he can get back in for the remainder of it in the third period. But two fives. Yeah. That's the second one. And uh, that's right up uh, the speed for Jackson Lord, who now has his 58th penalty minutes of the season. Well, they're talking whether it's a DQ or not. So that's that's going to be the. And does he have any others with 53 that's penalty minutes? Correct. No. Nope. Nobody else went in the box, so. Of course, the Hilltoppers have had their own bouts with DQs. Yeah. Zy Smith with two. He has not been playing since the last one. And the all-you-can-eat buffet starts again for the Hilltoppers. They got a couple last time. Here's Gus Weiner. Weiner to Carter Hayes. Hayes down in the corner. It's Thomas Bryant who's working that spot for Colin Como for right now. Olmstead trying to work it on out. Gloved by Tillman. Tillman sends it. Right wing. Now low to Thomas Bryant. Bryant back to Weiner. Weiner looks for a screen. And it bounces at the circle and cleared. Down all the way. Buck 05 left here in the second period. Hilltoppers down by two. Well, it looks like uh, Como wants to come back in here. And that would be great news. Up ice. That was Tillman. Left wing for Bryant. Bryant towards the front of the net. Backhand just wide. He got it. And he got knocked hammered. down right in front as he came in towards the crease. He got hammered. Islanders kill some time with that dump in. Here's Gus Weiner. Weiner looking up ice. He'll take it himself. Weiner makes a hit as he comes across the blue line, got the better of it. Behind the net, Como back out there, I believe. And yep. it is Como. But a nice clear here by the Highlanders. 20 seconds left. Here's Cicerello. You got to pay attention. He comes flying in yeah, on the kill. Stretch pass to Schuster. Touch to Como. 
And they have to regroup. They'll be offside. Schuster takes it in. On net, glove save made by O'Connor. That'll do it for the period. 7-5 after two periods of play here at the Omni Center. Plenty of goal scoring. Really not good defense. Two goal deficit after two. Shots 25-22, three shot edge for the Onalaska Hilltoppers. As we try to flag down our peeps in the box. Wojnowski. Oh, he's leaving. Tony's leaving. Oh, he's leaving. All right, that's fine. We don't need to do it. I don't think anyone in the box was Wynowski. approaching him. Yeah, there we go. They got the Wojnowski. I don't think he's going to come back. It's, it's too late now. I think Coach already went into the locker room. Nobody was going towards him, so. I don't, know, I don't think he's going to come back. We'll take a commercial break, and we'll be back with your Interstate Wealth LLC intermission report here on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Do you feel the need, the need to be free? Totally free checking, that is. Cooley Bank can satisfy that need. His free, her free, your free. Free means something different to everyone. Totally free means Cooley Bank has you covered. Free debit card, free online banking, free bill pay, free mobile banking, free e-statements, free interest checking, and a free gift when you open your account. Do you feel the need to be free? Totally free? Go to any Cooley Bank branch or CooleyBank.net for more information. Cooley Bank, member FDIC. Fall and winter are fast approaching, and CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal suggests you leave that fall cleanup and snow removal to them. CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal can provide all the services you need to make your neighbors green with lawn envy. Mowing, trimming, edging, landscaping, gutter cleaning, and they even work with Grace's Pet Waste Removal to be your complete lawn cleanup solution. We'll pause our commercial break here as I think the coach made his way back out here. Coach Tony Navarre joining us here in between the second intermission. Coach, this game has had a lot of goal scoring and very little defense. Your take after two periods. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I, we're talking after the first period just about kind of cleaning a couple things up as they enter the zone and trying to clear a net front a little bit more. It's, it's fun, I guess. Lots it, of goals. It's fun for fans to watch, but <laughs> for coaches and, and people who like defense, it's not so much fun. I mean, I don't think either team, the Hilltoppers or your Highlanders, have, have really concentrated on finding guys coming into the zone. There's been a lot of openings and open shots for goal scoring. Yeah, I give credit to Onalaska. They hide that third guy coming in the zone well, and so that's been giving our defenseman or our centerman that's supposed to be down helping out a little bit of problem. They start getting on the puck and they lose track of the third guy coming in. Uh, that last goal they had, that number five, was a perfect example. They just, the guy's sitting back door and our, our defenseman didn't find him. He was kind of puck watching and, and it hit that backside. So it's one of those things we'll talk about after this period. Hey, Coach Dean Lonsbro here. Say, I, you know, I was impressed early and, and, and throughout the game here with just, you know, the, the grit and the, and the effort, you know, and I always, I always tell players with all the years I coached is you control two things, your effort and your attitude. And uh, you guys are excited in warm-ups. It's just fun to see the, you know, it looks like they're having fun. Uh, yeah, you know, we had a really tough loss against West Bend in our last game. Um, and the guys stuck around afterwards and kind of had one of those moments like, what are we gonna do with the season and how do we want to play? And, and the, the big thing that came out of it is that they were just kind of on each other a little bit too much. And so the emphasis the entire week has been you know, the, the players have to stay positive with each other and pick each other up. And, man, they just have done so much better. It, even with the mistakes we made, the guys are picking each other up, and you can see the difference when they play on the ice. That's I, good to see. I, I really like watching number six, Rocco Cicerella, especially on the penalty kill. He just he just busts down ice, and he's just ready to play. He is a guy who likes the spotlight, does he not? He, oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> if you think he loves the spotlight here, you should see him at school when, when he's uh, around all the ladies. But uh, I'm sure. Yeah, he, he loves it. I mean, the, the thing is, we've got a bunch of kids with really great motors, and Rocco is, you know, probably the, the steering wheel of the whole thing, but you talk about that line of J.J. and Michael. They, they all just want to move and, and, and work off of each other, and and so, yeah, and, and even our second line tonight is, has really stepped up. They've been, they've been working really hard, so, um, yeah, it's fun. They, 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 
they've really stepped it up since our last game, and that's really what we're working on, one game at a time. Well, I really appreciate you making time for us, Coach. Thanks for coming back. Apologize <laughs> for forgetting. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Right. Right. It was a team effort from the penalty box. We got it yeah, done. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. There he is, Coach Tony Navarre here in our intermission. Let's get to our commercial break. Now we'll get back to that. Here it is 7-5 in favor of Homestead after two periods of play on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Do you feel the need, the need to be free? Totally free checking, that is. Cooley Bank can satisfy that need. His free, her free, your free. Free means something different to everyone. Totally free means Cooley Bank has you covered. Free debit card, free online banking, free bill pay, free mobile banking, free e-statements, free interest checking, and a free gift when you open your account. Do you feel the need to be free? Totally free? Go to any Cooley Bank branch or CooleyBank.net for more information. Cooley Bank, member FDIC. Fall and winter are fast approaching, and CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal suggests you leave that fall cleanup and snow removal to them. CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal can provide all the services you need to make your neighbors green with lawn envy. Mowing, trimming, edging, landscaping, gutter cleaning, and they even work with Grace's Pet Waste Removal to be your complete lawn cleanup solution. Go to CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal on Facebook to get a free quote for your fall cleanup and snow removal needs, or give them a call at 608-792. 2874. CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal. A cut above the rest. When you start craving the great taste of Chicago style Italian beef, sausage, Vienna beef hot dogs, or off the spit gyros, or the new Italian sub sandwich packed with imported Italian lunch meat and provolone, it's time for you and two or three of your friends to hop in your ride and fill that crave with great Chicago food with attitude. Gino's Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs in Alaska. You can also have Gino's delivered right to you through the Eat Street app and grab it. Gino Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs, the real taste of Chicago. Maureen's Volkswagen LaCrosse is committed to your enhancing both your buying and ownership experience. Your place where happiness matters in the Cooley region. A 2021 Volkswagen inventory includes the economical Jetta, the reliable Passat, the very popular Tiguan, the family-friendly Atlas, and the red-hot Atlas Crossport. On top of Maury's Buy Happy Promises, your new Volkswagen comes with a four-year, 50,000-mile warranty, a five-year no-cost car net, and a two-year no-cost maintenance. Visit us at Maury's Volkswagen La Crosse. We are always working for a sustainable tomorrow. That's our promise. A promise doesn't change when things get tough. These are unprecedented times, and that promise of who we are and what we stand for can be seen on the faces of our 45,000 teammates. We could not be prouder of them as they continue to be there for our customers, for our communities, and for each other, today and tomorrow. Life is full of transitions. You may be transitioning from the education system to the workforce. You may be moving from a single life to a life filled with family. But there may be no bigger transition for us than that of moving out of the workforce and into retirement. Brent Peterson at Interstate Wealth has been helping those in the Cooley region and surrounding communities successfully make that transition since 2006. Brent's mission is to provide sound, professional advice in a manner that eliminates confusion, provides clarity, and promotes fellowship. Being an independent financial advisor Brent has the flexibility and the freedom to design a plan that truly fits your best interests, thus fulfilling his fiduciary responsibilities. Whether you need investment advice, portfolio management help, life insurance needs, or have social security questions, give Brent a call at 608-790-9925. Interstate Wealth, your road to success starts here. Investment advisory services offered by Virtue Capital Management, LLC, VCM. VCM is a registered investment advisor. VCM and Interstate Wealth, LLC, are independent of each other. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance services. Welcome to the CRSN Intermission Report, brought to you by Interstate Wealth, LLC. Your road to success starts here with Interstate Wealth, LLC. Now, here's Rick Frankie. Rick and Dean back with you from the Omni Center Media Box as we are in our second intermission. 7-5 Homestead leading the Onalaska Co-op Hilltoppers. Shots 25-22, three-shot edge for the home team. Uh, Big Al's Pizza, downtown La Crosse, historic downtown La Crosse. Been making pizzas for years and years and years. And then uh, Ryan Johnson takes over and, uh, and grows it even bigger and, and new menu items. And it's just such a cool place. If you haven't been there, it's just got great specials all during the week. Monday. 
All 16-inch specialty pizzas and two-topping build-your-own pizzas are just $20. We're talking the finest of ingredients at Big Al's. Try it. If you haven't had it, you'll definitely be back. Those of you that did, you're ordering right now. I think they even do the uh, the delivery through yep. Eat Street. Yes, so they you do. can have them do that. If you're going to watch football tomorrow, maybe you just want to sit down with your friends and do some pizza. Free garlic cheese bread with 16-inch pizza purchase. Limit one on Sundays at Big Al's in historic downtown La Crosse. Third period coming up next here on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Imagine if you could feel better and live healthier without drugs or surgery. What if we told you that at Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, we can help you turn that thought into a reality for you and your family with safe, gentle, and effective chiropractic care. At Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, we focus on treating the whole person at one of our multiple locations, located in Southwest Wisconsin. We are a team of family-oriented chiropractors who offer our patients quality care as it relates to nutrition and weight loss, exercise, and living a healthy lifestyle. From newborns to seniors and everyone in between, all of our patients can experience the benefits of chiropractic care. Whether you're visiting us because you want to feel better, get out of pain, or even lose weight, we want you to know that you've come to the right place on your journey to wellness. Through tailored and specific care plans, we'll create the best treatment for your unique needs. And we don't stop there. We'll listen to your concerns and make you a partner in your care. At Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers, we don't just get you well, we'll help you stay well too. Discover the Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Centers difference. At Ultra, we believe in financial health and that good habits start early. Learning how to save and spend responsibly can make a big difference in a child's life and yours. Give your child the independence they want with Ultra's Live Your Life Spend account. It's a free account designed for money-savvy teens and young adults with all the extra features you'll love. No minimum balance and no monthly fees, free online and mobile banking, plus cash back debit card rewards. Ultra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life. Every time I go to Angelini's Pizzeria and Restaurante in Alaska, I have a problem deciding on which menu items to order because they're all so amazing. I mean, how does one choose between Chicago stuffed pizza with that tangy tomato sauce and luscious cheese, or a deep dish pan pizza packed with flavor, or Angelini's thin crust pizza with that magical crunch? Lasagna, risotto de pesci, lobster linguine, calamari. Man, this is tough. Hey, at least I know I'll finish the meal with cannolis, Angelini's Pizzeria and Restaurante on Highway 35 in Onalaska, you're invited to taste the difference. It is time for the final question. Who is offered the Rogers rate? Jacob State Farm? Basically anyone. Sorry, buddy, that's incorrect. <laughs> See? We offer great rates that fit anyone's budget. That's enough. Thank you very much. Jessica in the middle, you said me? No. Sorry. What are we doing? Whatever. Also me. Great LOL. That was really important. Of course. Everybody gets the rates, I guess. For surprisingly great rates that fit any budget, like a good name. Rick and Dean back at the Omni Center. Had to cut things short there as we get back to action here in the third. I better adjust my scoreboard here so we have the right period, right? There we go. We're underway. And a 3.20 left on the major penalty to the Homestead Highlanders. And so a power play, all you can eat for. The Hilltoppers down by two as we're underway. Chopped back in here by Homestead. Now it's Noah Gillette, the back of the skates of Peyton Jones. Jones dropped the puck, and it's now picked up by Noah. Gillette back pedals to the blue line. Looks up to Como, gets it there right wing. Dump in off the right wing wall. Schuster, nice no-look tap pass to the slot, but not able to quite hook up. Here's Quinn Anderson, drops it down low. Now it's Schuster. Schuster tries to walk out of the corner, but had it taken away. Can't clear it, though. Jones, Jones just had it knocked past his stick and into the neutral zone. He'll rip it off the glass, rings around the rail, and then it's cleared by J.J. Perez. Gillette now hits Como in right wing. Not the way they want to come into the zone on the power play. Clement comes out of the net. There's Cicerello lurking. 
These guys were having fun with the 50-50 drawing. The yeah, they were. <laughs> Highlanders, after they announced the winner, they all cheered like they won. And right now they're winning 7-5, to five, a high-scoring game here at the Omni Center. The first of two here tonight is a backhand by Schuster. The pipe was pinned by the goaltender. And able to make the stop. And the pipe stayed on. It did. But that's because it's this post. The yeah, other it's post. that far one. Far post. you got to make sure to mention that to Tim. I will. So just underway, third period. 153 left on the major penalty to Lord. And it's Weiner. Sets it left wing to Carter Hayes, who comes right wing with it. Now they're two bunched up. It's not how you get into the zone. No, you need to bring play. it back and regroup. On the move, they come on in there. That was Birmingham, and stop was made by Clement. Now a chance here. Once again, blocker save made off the shot by West. Again, you shouldn't be in your defensive zone having a shooting gallery while you're on the power play. No, you got to spread out, bring it out the back side. They can only press you on one side. That was not how you work a power play so far, and they're, they're wasting time with just 127 left on it. Yeah, they certainly need to get one just in this last minute and a half. Here's Quinn Anderson coming out from behind the net. Quinn draws some space now, looks up ice. Let's get it right this time. Oh, oh that's not it as that misses. That's an ice. Gillette and icing on the power play. Yeesh. Come on, boys. This is not the way you got to come out in the third period with a Remaining three something on a major penalty. Now just 113 remains. Gillette settles in. Draw one by the Hilltoppers. He wins the draw and I'll just set it up. I don't know. Here's Peyton, he's gonna take his turn at it. Peyton Jones up to Como. He gets knocked down as the puck is sent in. Now the Hilltoppers, Gillette in the attack zone. Backhand pass, Quinn Anderson. Anderson too soft with the dish. And now Gillette trying to find the puck. Kept it in, Quinn. Top of the circle, shot by Jones. Rebound, still loose. There's Look at the buzz. net, it's off again every <laughs> time. Might as well just assume that it's gonna be off. Is Tim watching us in the corner? That post, Tim, that post, that post. <laughs> uh, tie up on the draw. Hilltoppers, Como. There's Gillette with a shot, trickling. And again, Cherry, it's a fire, was playing. This time it doesn't cross the line. It's Quinn Anderson. Flipped out to Peyton Jones. Jones with another shot. Oh, that I thought that close. one was going to go in. Hilltoppers trying to get it with 18 seconds left on that major penalty. They are buzzing. Noah Gillette again as they continue the cycle. Gillette from the circle, walks it, spins, drops it back, Quinn Anderson. Anderson rips it on off to Jones. Jones back to Anderson. Back. Anderson to is. the slot to Como, and the that save bumper's is made. there. Como's doing a nice job of floating around in that, in that bumper area, and you got to get it to him. Get him. Yep. Good work. O'Brien makes the stop, though, and just two seconds remain on the Lord penalty. I don't know if you were watching the Toma Sparta Avalanche game last night here, but did you see uh, the principal from Toma looks like Aaron Rodgers? I don't know if you knew that. No, I did not. Yeah. Here's a clear by Wanowski, and right as he comes out of the box, <laughs> Lord has the biscuit. And he puts it right out in front, they score! Cicerello was there in a camp out making s'mores, and then he puts some more in the net, and it's now nine or eight, I should say, to five as the uh, Homestead Highlanders are continuing to just make the Hilltoppers defense look horrible. <laughs> Rocco giving me the thumbs up. He's a, he's a piece of work, boy. Good kid. He had a campfire in front. Yep. He was just sitting there, waiting. He's probably gonna get another one here. It's another centering pass and another goal. Back well, he got time. an assist. Rocco picks up the assist. It's now nine to five. I was, it was my premonition it was nine to five. Look at these Look at guys. <laughs> Look at these guys. Look at these beauties, eh? <laughs> oh, 
my God. They're having fun now. I think that was uh, JJ Perez, second goal of the game. So that heart was there for a moment. They almost capitalized the end of the major, but then everything just fell apart. Yep. Well, that's what I said when I was talking to Coach. He just doesn't, these kids don't quit. Como gets point blank and shoots that one right off O'Brien. Now Peyton Jones in the corner. Jones looking for Como in front. There's a loose biscuit. They score! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a hustle there right there. Go. And I believe that was Noah Gillette who poked it in at the near post. And it's now 9 6. <laughs> oh, man. The goals are flowing. Unbelievable. Like Dean's Harry used to have. Oh. <laughs> That was a long time ago, my friend. It was. I saw pictures. So I know it was for real. Wow. Win Anderson to Myrie to Gillette. And now controlled by Homestead. Sent just wide off the stick of Jonah Miller. Picked up by the Hilltoppers. Gillette taps it up to Como. Como's lane closed off. That's almost interference. Wynowski put it into the corner. He'll get it back on his stick. Knocks Gillette down in the process. There's a shot save made by O'Brien. Here's Carter Hayes now. Hayes dangles behind the net. Ooh, he put it in front. Nobody there on the other side. Gillette was tangled up. Bank off the left wing wall. Back is Shafolia. Shots are 33-25, eight shot edge for Onalaska Co-op. Thomas Bryant looking for Schuster, but he did not handle the pass. Bryant again off the wall. Well, it's picked up, and Bryant gets the best of that as he crossed the line and knocked down the Highlander attacker. Jackson Lord up ice. Drops it in, rings around to the firewall. Picked up on the other side by Mark Schimpf. Schimpf behind the net. That was a pretty good hack. Did Schimpf remind you of Tyler Lee a little bit? Bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Como, one time they oh! score! He finds Schuster all alone. No one playing D in this one, folks. <laughs> and they're back and make it a two goal deficit. Nine to seven. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I, like I said, man, it's like an all-star game where nobody really wants to go and hit anybody else. It's like, hey, let's let them get into the zone. Let's just leave our goalies as a sacrifice at the altar. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it's still fun to watch. Oh, I, I, it's not like it isn't fun. I'm having a blast. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack. And, well, it's just not <laughs> hockey fundamentals. It's just everything's out the window. That's an icing here on Homestead. Well, it could make this last 11 minutes interesting. I would take me an entire day to do goal highlights if I decided I was getting to them. Sift through oh, all Coach these goals. Oh, Coach would be up for 10 hours on this one. <laughs> Yeah, for defensive training. Yeah. That's a flip dump down. And it sounds like we're complaining. I we're enjoying the game. It's just, I mean, it's just not what you want to see from any team's defense. Here's Como. I mean, there's some good offensive players in this oh, game. Don't yeah. get me wrong. And here's one of them. Como. Quick turnaround. That goes wide. But boy, between the lack of D and the goaltenders just struggling. I can't remember the last time I said amazing save either. Oh boy, here comes Here's Rocco. Here's a chance and I say amazing save. How about then I asked for it, Rocco doesn't like it, but Clement with an amazing <laughs> save. I asked for it, I got it. You got it. And a point blank one on one and Rocco Cicerello. He's not dancing after that one. No, he's back at the bench. He says, ah, <laughs> coach, out of that one. Hilltoppers win the draw. Here's Hayes up to Schuster. And 
separated from the puck. He'll get it back. Schuster, shot on net, and O'Brien makes a save. Both teams know these goaltenders have seen so much going in the back of the net that they think they can score every time they shoot. It doesn't matter what angle it is. Right. Our thanks to Ultra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life at CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal. They're a cut above the rest. Schimpf. Pushed it cross ice. Oh, he'll get it back on his stick. He's being hassled by Bryant. Picked up by Schuster. Here's Schuster again. That grazed the top of the glove. Tillman makes a hit as he sends it down low to Schuster. Schuster had 11 goals coming in. He gets one here. and well, He might even have two. I have lost yep. track. I normally can keep it all in my head, but in this one, forget about it. 16 goals. <laughs> I think he has two. That's one, you know, when I was calling NA3HL games and NAHL games, we used to have, you know, the scoring updated on the computer so I could follow along right. and give people the recap and all that. You, I don't have the, I have run too many controls to write down stats and all that stuff nowadays. It's what the color guy should do. Yeah, I guess. Oh, look should. at this! In oh, front. nice Jones play by with Jones. A nice spinorama in the corner. Nice play by Jones. Anderson chips it to the left wing wall. Dumped in with a backhand they, by Como. They definitely have a game plan of hitting Como. Yep. Wynowski tried to clear, couldn't. Como off the left wing wall. Now it's Gillette. Gillette backhand push down low. Como. Como right in front. Backhand oh. shot by Jones. Nice save made by O'Brien. There's Jones again. That's going to be blocked. Quinn Anderson, oh, tapped it right to the guys in dark. And here comes Cicerello. Left wing stops on a dime to the slot. The ripper by Wynowski. And they score. Double digits. It's 10 to 7. Nice play by Rocco. Was going hard to the post. Did a little turnaround. Hit the third guy coming down the slot. Goalie doesn't stand a chance. Well, 10 goals given up now by the Hilltoppers. That's the most this season. And going back, I can't remember the last time you guys gave up 11 goals when you were coaching. No. I know it was nine or it was 10 nine against, against Wanakee. Nine. Never double digits. Not in the 20 years I was there. 17 goals and we still have 840 left here. Now a three goal advantage here for Homestead. Yeah, they're cheering Wayne Wynowski. <laughs> you see him celebrate like he just won the Stanley Cup? Oh, absolutely. That was fun. I like that. They this is a fun team. I, I, this, it, it, <laughs> they, they have fun playing hockey. Well, that's, and that's what I like to see. That's what we talked with to Coach Tony about. You know, they play with some passion the right way. Yeah. But without defense, much like the Hilltoppers today. Myrie touches the puck and then the whistle. I didn't see what the whistle was for. Looks like he's going to get. Uh... Where? Well, we didn't need to take one there. Oh, Myrie got a penalty. Boy, it was. I know it was from the back corner here, so that's where they saw it. And it was Myrie did something, but I don't know what he. What did they give? What, what was the penalty? I, he doesn't give a good sign. No, I, I, I didn't see anything come from him. Schuster, why is Myrie up on the scoreboard? Unsportsmanlike, he did, I saw oh, him mouth him. He's serving it for Schuster then, okay, gotcha. So Myrie's serving the penalty, 24 serving 25's penalty. And it's a power play here, and a three goal lead for the Highlanders. Birmingham lost the handle on the puck. Here's Como up the right wing. Wynowski was with him. Now oh, it's J.J. Perez who pushed it up to the forwards. There's no quit in Como and Jones. Nope. They, they're doing everything they can. Lord sends it around. Now Wynowski back in the near point. Knocked down low. Covered by Weiner. Wynowski again. Misses left. Weiner rides the rail, can't get it out. From the circle to the high slot, Wynowski, nice kick, saving the butterfly by Clement. Doesn't know where it is, but he did stop it. 55 ticks left on the penalty 
to Schuster. 7.02 left here in the third period. 10 to seven. And they'll escape the zone and kill some time here on this Highlander power play. Malecki left it in the corner. Dump in here. Sean West on the other side trying to play it. We got it to Jaden Lopez. Now the one-timer shot off the side of the net by Waraska. He's a freshman. Or Waraksa. Sorry. Sounded like Harry Carey there pronouncing. <laughs> I don't see any Budweiser Holy up here. Holy cow, what did he just say? I don't see any Bud up here. There's a pass right to the front of the net and batted by Clement. Still no whistle, can't get a glove on it. And again, the power play comes to an end. Look at Clement, wow. shooting gallery, and he made a bunch of good saves Boy, down the butterfly. Boy, did he make some nice saves there. Put three more up on there. There was three more shots. It's got to be 31 now for Homestead. They have a way low number compared to what they really have on net. Correct. Schuster picks it up from behind. Soft one on net, covered up by the trapper of O'Brien. 5.42 left, three goal lead. That was a really good sequence for Clement. Highlanders. Best sequence of the night, I would say, for yeah. him. See the Avalanche and West Bend. Ice Bears, I believe their nickname. That would be correct. Hilltoppers win the draw, blocked in the slot. Then Myrie puts it off the left wing wall. Como's pass knocked down. Backhand scoop out of the zone by Cicerello. And O'Brien will cover it up. Rocco Cicerello has shown his stuff here tonight. We expected it. Came in with 39 points. He's added to it. I don't think I've ever seen him without a smile on his face. Seems like a happy kid, loving life. He's like the Fonz there at Homestead High School, right? Yeah. He's kind of the Fonz. He's that guy. He's that guy. Well, even the coach said, the girls, he loves <laughs> He's them. He's that guy. They love him. <laughs> Rocco Cicerello, great hockey name. Time out to discuss things. We'll keep it right here. And a reminder, we have high school basketball on Tuesday as the Toma Timberwolves tip off against the Unalaska Hilltoppers boys. MVC hoops with Scotty Grant and Tom Yashinsky. Next Thursday, La Crescent Lancers. Boys hockey, our first look at them and Coach Uriah Hayes as guess, they'll tangle with the Avalanche Hockey Co-op. That might be their last game before playoffs. I think the seeding meeting's next sat. Well, there's, there's still a bunch of games. Like the Hilltoppers have uh, West Bend tomorrow, Chippewa Falls at Chippewa Monday, Tuesday at Black River, Friday at Waukesha, Saturday, D.C. Everest comes here the 5th, Winona here the 8th, and the 12th, it's at Also, Hayward. it is. It's always the Super Bowl. That's right. They moved it back a week. So, seating meeting. So, there's lots of games yeah. still to be played, but but broadcasts, we, we we only have one more hockey broadcast for you. So, well, some teams. Until the playoffs. Some teams don't have a lot left because they got they they front load their, their uh, schedules. Well, Homestead's got Avalanche tomorrow. That's a 3.30 start at Cedarburg, at Whitefish Bay. Home against West Bend, big game there. And at Nina, Hortonville, Menasha. That'll be a tough one for him. Off the draw, Hilltoppers come up with it. It's Como. Como looking there in front for Schuster, couldn't connect. And the empty net goes just wide. Hilltoppers playing with the gape as it comes up to Schuster. And Carter Hayes, here's Gillette, they're on sides. Nice block, oh, sacrificing the body, did Lord. And it comes all the way. Oh my Lord, it'll come back into the zone. Like that's never been said before. No. I see the, this period he put Jones on D and Schuster up front. 
Hey, you got to do whatever. You, it's sick. It's it's an empty net, and you got this. No, he had him out there more four like that six too. Six skaters. It'll be dropped off the left wing wall deep into the corner. Carter Hayes trying to get position. He tangles with Lord, and then Como comes out of it. Como to Jones. Jones into the corner, looking for Gillette, and it's going to be the Highlanders towards the. Hilltoppers end, but not able to control the puck well. High shot, glove save made by O'Brien, and he sees Gillette and decides, I'm just not feeling comfortable here. I'm See, I would on. drop that because they got their six best guys out there and just let them keep skating. 423 left. Well, it didn't happen, but yeah, I could see why you would say that. Yeah, absolutely. Hilltoppers win the draw. Here's Thomas Bryant. Bryant. And his pass gets knocked down, but not out. Here's Jones with a screen, set of the slot of his block, and it gets past him into the neutral zone. Oh, Cicerello likes the open net. He'll put it towards it, and off the side. He missed, just a bit missed outside. it by that much. He was looking for a Hattie. He was, 4.06 left. Face off will come all the way back down. That's the, that's the thing about trying to put the puck in the net from the neutral zone is it should come back. Oh, they're gonna drop it outside the Hilltoppers at. Did he call offside? I guess, because that's the only reason why it would be back here. So it is, and of course, Clement back into the net towards the front it comes, and nobody wanted to take a shot. Under four minutes to play in the third. Hilltoppers need three to climb back in this one. Shot, redirected in front, and it was almost number three for number three. Sean West, but nice job by Clement. Get down in front. How's the toll? It's actually uh, hanging in there, Dean. It's, you know, I'm doing all right. I didn't tell everybody I had a bad toe, but thanks for letting them know. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Off the draw, the Hilltoppers. <laughs> Up the right wing, here comes Como. Three on two, Gillette. Gillette with a puck dangling. He'll put it in front, they score! Oh. Como with another one. Oh no, oh, he what? waved it. Wait a second, what the heck, that's a goal. Boy, they that... continue action, it was in the net and back out. I don't yeah. know what they're, unbelievable, the Hilltoppers now robbed. They got, now they got empty an empty net. Netter. Oh, thanks officials. Holy cow. That was a goal, Colin. You got one taken away from you. I don't know what the heck was going on there with the officials. Unbelievable. 11 to 7. I'd be asking for an explanation. I mean, like, right now. In the net. And back out. Couldn't tell you who scored the empty net goal, but it is 11 to 7 now, and you can turn out the lights. Going to be tough for the boys to come back. Four goals here with 3.16 left. There's another chance shot by Wynowski and another one taken. They're not slowing down no, at all. No, they don't. It's not in their DNA. Birmingham and Wynowski. Schimpf got his second of the game on the empty netter. Como would have had his fourth goal of the night. It was yep. robbed from him. Another shot on that, and the save made by Clement. As Michael Birmingham is showing his stick tonight. He's had a lot of shots on goal. Geez, two more. We got 20 scored in the game. Kind of surprised that uh, Coach Navarre does still have the first line out there right now with a four-goal yeah, lead. But Rock wants three. Yep, that's going to be wide, and Birmingham keeps the puck in. Shafolius, nice outlet. Nice move by Gillette. Gillette with Como again. Oh, he tried for the same play they scored on, but not able to hit it that time. Here's J.J. Perez. He kind of outdid himself on that move. Shot saved there by Clement and pushed out by Weiner. And a shot to go. Wynowski scores another one, 12-7. Trying to make a point now, ain't he?
Yeah, I, okay. I know I see I see Jonah Miller out there now. Yep. I see Nate Pound. I, I think that was one too many. Here's Myrie to Schuster. I kind of understand what he's thinking because we've had uh, we've had a lead where we well want a key, start playing some extra guys, and then well, things happen. Five goal lead here with under two minutes to play. That shot is blocked. And there's a shot by Carter Hayes, and O'Brien scoops it up. Oh, yeah. Bench went over a bunch of them playing the JV game, I'm assuming, for on Alaska. Oh, and they'll play on rink two then, because uh, it's West yeah. Bend and the Avalanche coming up next. West Bend looks pretty darn good. They're the top team in the North Shore. And they beat this team 4-1. to one. Somebody was playing defense in that meeting. What did you get on a whistle there, Dino? I don't know what he called. No, oh, the kid's helmet came off. Como ah, checked him in the kid's. I gotcha. This one's a hot mess. Yeah, a lot can happen in a minute 46, too. <laughs> Five goal deficit. It could, the way this one's been going. Quinn Anderson. And Schuster kind of redirected it to the corner. Good job to pinch and hold by Weiner. Has a second chance to do it, but it does escape the zone. Up ice comes Quinn Anderson. Three on one chance, and O'Brien flashes the glove. What did I say? Yeah, 20 could be scored today. 40 shots on goal for the Hilltoppers, 33 for Homestead. I think they're a little short on the I on agree. other one. Yeah, I'm on the same page with you on that, Dino. Wait, we need one more skater. <laughs> they only have four on the bench. <laughs> Quinn, yeah, the rest of the ones went to play JV, it does appear. Shafolius back into the zone. To Como. The Jones, nice touch pass to Gillette. Gillette with a little turn back move. That was nice. But unfortunately, not able to do anything with it. Jones had it pickpocketed. And here's West up ice. West put it towards the front, looking for Shimp. And thrown down low by Wynowski. And Wynowski got Shimp taken off his stick. Como with 45 seconds left. Over to Gillette. Gillette back to Como. Como high slot. He'll go to the one-handed backhand. Pushed in the net by Gillette. Wow. And they score one more. There's your 20. <laughs> There's 20 goals. <laughs> 12 to 8, Gillette scores. I'll give them credit. They didn't quit. It's my first 20-goal game that I've called in the WIAA. Plenty of them in the NA3 and a few of them in the NAHL. 74 shots. I mean, even when the Hilltoppers were beating bad teams, it, it never we got never, to that number. No. We'd work on regroups and... Schuster put that one high. Eight seconds remain. And West and Chifolius tie up with one second left for one more puck drop, folks. One more puck drop. Nope, we won't even bother. Let's just, let's just gather together and then <laughs> get the buzzer. That does it for this one. 12 to eight, the final score here. The Homestead Highlanders over the Hilltoppers of Alaska, the co-op. Post-game show is coming up. We'll do it next here on the Cooley Region Sports Network. Stay with us. It's raining again.
you're trying to sleep upstairs, but you're thinking about what's going on down here. How is your sump pump doing? Is it still running? What will you find in the basement? At Every Plumbing, we want you to sleep with confidence during the heaviest of rains. Our double sump pump with controller system will give you that confidence. It minimizes wear and tear on pumps, and if one fails, there's always a backup. Call Every Plumbing today for a free estimate. Noble Insurance Service, building strong relationships to secure your future. Whether you need homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, life insurance, or commercial insurance, we work with a variety of companies. That ensures you get the protection you need. At Noble Insurance, we're committed to creating a partnership so that as your needs change, your coverage keeps pace. Call Noble Insurance Service and let's create a plan personalized just for you and your needs. Cooley Golf Bowl is the number one recreation facility in Onalaska, but it's also a perfect place to watch the big game or stop in after a hard day's work to unwind with great food and drinks. Cooley Golf Bowl has you covered with an extensive menu, including great choices from apps to entrees and mouth-watering daily specials like burgers, tacos, prime rib, tenderloin tips, shrimp, fish, and roasted chicken are just a few of the daily specials. Cooley Golf Bowl Sports Bar and Grill. Visit them online at CooleyGB.com and sign up for their e club to get special offers and promotions. Do you feel the need? The need to be free? Totally free checking, that is. Cooley Bank can satisfy that need. His free, her free, your free. Free means something different to everyone. Totally free means Cooley Bank has you covered. Free debit card, free online banking, free bill pay, free mobile banking, free e-statements, free interest checking, and a free gift when you open your account. Do you feel the need to be free? Totally free? Go to any Cooley Bank branch or CooleyBank.net for more information. Cooley Bank, member FDIC. When you start craving the great taste of Chicago-style Italian beef, sausage, Vienna beef hot dogs, or off-the-spit gyros, or the new Italian sub sandwich packed with imported Italian lunch meat and provolone, it's time for you and two or three of your friends to hop in your ride and fill that crave with great Chicago food with attitude. Gino's Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs in Onalaska. You can also have Gino's delivered right to you through the Eat Street app and grab it. Gino's Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs. The real taste of Chicago. Fall and winter are fast approaching, and CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal suggests you leave that fall cleanup and snow removal to them. CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal can provide all the services you need to make your neighbors green with lawn envy. Mowing, trimming, edging, landscaping, gutter cleaning, and they even work with Grace's Pet Waste Removal to be your complete lawn cleanup solution. Go to CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal on Facebook to get a free quote for your fall cleanup and snow removal needs, or give them a call at 608-792. 2874. CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal. A cut above the rest. Maureen's Volkswagen La Crosse is committed to enhancing both your buying and ownership experience. Your place where happiness matters in the Cooley region. Our 2021 Volkswagen inventory includes the economical Jetta, the reliable Passat, the very popular Tiguan, the family friendly Atlas, and the red hot Atlas Crossport. On top of Maury's Buy Happy Promises, your new Volkswagen comes with a 4-year, 50,000-mile warranty, a 5-year no-cost car net, and a 2-year no-cost maintenance. Visit us at Maury's Volkswagen La Crosse. We are always working for a sustainable tomorrow. That's our promise. A promise doesn't change when things get tough. These are unprecedented times, and that promise of who we are and what we stand for can be seen on the faces of our 45,000 teammates. We could not be prouder of them as they continue to be there for our customers, for our communities, and for each other, today and tomorrow. Welcome to the CRSN Post Game Show. Now, here's Rick Frankie. Welcome to the CRSN post game show. As uh, no one thought, I would say on the if you had the the over under, I nobody nobody had uh, twenty goals anywhere uh, expected today. I expected maybe a seven to four game, something like that. You know, in yeah. that range, eleven yep. goals, but not double that. No, no, that would no one. If anybody predicted that, they they know something we don't. Yeah, it, this was just nuts. I mean, I think uh, you know your goalies will probably say. I don't ever want to watch this game ever. Like so, they won't go back and look at the archive. 
Look at the size of those goalies. I think there's, yeah, there's a <laughs> Ice Bears of West Bend playing the Avalanche here next. Uh, we will not have that broadcast for you, though. Um, but on paper, it doesn't look good for the Avalanche. I'll just say that. This West Bend team is pretty good. And uh, got some guys with some good size. Yeah, you mentioned the goalies, but I like these uniforms, too. Those are pretty sharp. The Ice Bears. It's it's a cool, It's a. I mean, it's an angry bear. <laughs> yeah. It's different than the logo I found. Yep. Yeah. That logo wasn't as intimidating as the Angry Bear. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, 20 goals tonight, a 12-8 to win for Homestead. Uh, they're a fun team. They're going to have some fun tomorrow. They play the Avalanche, uh, I think, 3.30, I said, the start time on that one. Any final words, Dean, about tonight's game? No, it's just something you got to put behind you. You know, I, I was impressed with their effort late. They did not give up. And, and as I said at the beginning of the game, Homestead's not going to quit. That, that's, their, that's in their DNA on that side of the state. They're going to finish checks. They're going to they're going to play hard, and uh, you know it's going to have a short turnaround here, and and they got to get ready for a West Bend team that on paper is going to be pretty good. Yeah, they're a fun group. My thanks to you, Dean. A nice Absolutely. job. Absolutely. Always. Always. Uh, go down there and make uh, make it look like you work for the Wild with your Wild jacket on. I got to go know, say hi to Rocco. I'm sure you do. He's, he's big, big. coach. It's Coach Dean from the Minnesota Wild. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> my thanks to Jeff Ross on camera, as always, doing a fantastic job. Have yourself a great rest of your weekend. Good night now. On Alaska High School Winter Athletics on the Cooley Region Sports Network have been delivered courtesy of these great local businesses. Kurt Paff State Farm Insurance Agency of Onalaska. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Chiropractic Place Family Wellness Center. Natural, gentle, and effective care. Big Al's Pizza, downtown La Crosse. Quality and tradition since 1979. Hilltopper Refuse and Recycling Service, La Crosse's leader in waste management solutions. Every plumbing and heating, proudly serving the La Crosse area since 1969. The Crow, burgers, bourbon, beer. Noble Insurance Service, building strong relationships to secure your future. Also by Howie's, La Crosse's hometown hangout. Waste management, always working for a sustainable tomorrow. Angelini's Pizzeria and Ristorante. You're invited to taste the difference. Ultra Federal Credit Union, helping you live your best life. CT Lawn Care and Snow Removal, a cut above the rest. Slumberland Furniture, design your way at Slumberland Furniture. Gino's Chicago Beef and Hot Dogs, Chicago food with attitude. Cooley Bank, bank with confidence at Cooley Bank. Cooley Golf Bowl Bar and Grill, the number one recreational facility in Onalaska. And by Maury's Volkswagen Audi of La Crosse, moving life forward. Please subscribe to CRSN on YouTube. And don't forget to click on the bell to get immediate notifications whenever we go live anywhere. Also, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram to see highlights from games. Cooley Region Sports Network. Live, local, and anywhere you can get the World Wide Web. C-R-S-N.